maybe I'll put on extra pants. <laughs> Two layers. Uh, let me play you guys a song. out today. <clears throat> Alright guys, can you hear me? Turn this down a bit. And bro, it makes my day every single time I see that you're streaming. Well, thank you, man. It's nice to be back for, for a night. You know, I... <laughs> I've been doing some outdoorsy stuff for a bit. I moved out um, near a national park for, for a couple months here. So I'm going on hikes and stuff. And uh, yesterday I went out to the Olympic and um, I got lost in pitch black darkness in the middle of a mossy rainforest, like middle of the night. I uh, waited too long to come down from my hike. Um, and so I, I yeah, I like sprained my ankle, walked five miles. It was an adventure, a really good one. Um, but I made it back alive, and I was too tired today to do that again. So I was like, fuck it. You know, if I'm not going to be outside, I might as well go live again. Let's move from the physical masochism yesterday into the mental masochism today. It's nice to be back on Twitch. Music's a bit loud. All right, I'll turn it down a little. You trim your stash, Clock Lobster. I wasn't supposed to have it. Why does it keep growing? You look like you drive a truck for a living. Well, let's see how this game launch goes. <laughs> it's not off the table yet. Nice to see you too, Romaler. How are you, man? Yeah, I've been good. I've just been in a closet, uh, just working on the game all day, every day. It's good. The baby's coming this year. 
by the baby, I mean the game, of course. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, just been busy with that, really. Not doing much else, uh, you know, work day ends at like 4 p.m., 5 p.m., usually starts at 8. Um, I don't know. After that, I'm working on getting closer to God. Brain head pregnant confirmed. Nah, man. I'd have to have sex for that. Rain head looks like he's achieved enlightenment. Nah, no, far off, dude. Far off. I'll turn this down a little. I'm hyped for the game too, Nunzi. Uh, I'm by Olympic National Park, yeah, in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. I was in a little island near Seattle called Vashon Island um, a couple months ago. And then the weather got good, so the owners moved back. I had such a great place, but... Um, so I moved somewhere that kind of had similar vibes, you know, out in nature. There's no baby deer for me to feed here, unfortunately, but... Um, can't complain, you know, it's a good view and stuff. Got a little, it looks like a lake, but it really is the puddle. <laughs> it's like everything you see there, that's the whole thing. I kayaked out and, you know, could do a lap on the whole thing in five minutes. Um, but yeah, it's a good view, a little chilly. Can't complain though. But I will. Uh, never come here, all right. I, I thought I, I would be free to explore nature. You know, I thought I could enjoy the magnificent Pacific Northwest out here. And you just can't. Every five feet, I, I drove two hours north of Shelton. Every five feet, there's a sign telling you, you can't go here. You're not allowed to be here. Go fuck yourself. No parking. No this. No anything. Two hours, I'm driving along a national park where so few people ought to live. And there isn't... A fucking parking lot you're allowed to be in anywhere everything privatized there's a... yeah I don't know fuck them I uh you know at least there's fresh air there's Washington yeah nobody told me Jesus came back well that, that's coming soon brother that'll be right after World War 3 but uh We'll see if that's kicking off next year or not. Does Washington suck overall? Well, I loved Vashon. Like I said, that island was great. Um, I might move back there somewhere else. I'm not sure. I'm out of this place in like six weeks or something. I feel like I'm watching The Revenant to resort jazz music. It's not too far off. I was really afraid of bears yesterday. <laughs> it got pitch black. And I, I mean, I really, I walked like three miles on, on tracks that like you're not supposed to go on in the middle of a national park with no people, no roads, no cars, anywhere. And I, I walked three miles into the depth of this thing and then I see the start of a trail. And that's another three miles straight uphill. Uh, and I went all the way up the trail, and then the sun is setting, and I'm like, I, I run back down to the bottom of it, and when I got to the bottom, it's pitch black, pitch black. And I just don't know how to even find the trail for the first three miles. I was off trail for a lot of it. So yeah, I, I listened for the water, I walked to the water. It's like 10 p.m. at this point, raining. I was so exhausted, I needed the workout. It was like good, I had energy, I was warm. Um, yeah, I start following the water line, but there's no trail, so it's literally just like, you know, at, you turn around and there's just a wall of bramble on every side of you. And you can't go anywhere except like backwards or something. So I was just making the yeah, slow headway for a long time. I had one empty water bottle with me. I was so fucking thirsty. I was walking like six miles. And I saw these beautiful running streams everywhere, these creeks, like crystal clear water, you know? And I'm like, shit a picture of this on my glass of water, you know, surely, surely this is better than dying of dehydration. And so I take my, my empty water bottle under this, this Copper Creek uh, near Olympic, 
or in the middle of Olympic, and uh, there's these rapids uh, pouring down. I, I posted some photos on my Instagram story. But I, I fill up the water bottle and I'm drinking it and it, it tastes fine, it smells fine. I'm like, okay, you know, I've never drinking just like water in the wild before, but surely animals survive doing this somehow. You know, I drink half a liter of this on my little adventure back. You know, eventually I <laughs> literally prayed, God showed me the way, it was all good. I was going in the right direction, it was just slower than I expected because instead of going down the trail, I was going through like bramble just took forever and uh, eventually I get to my car I'm so fucking exhausted my head's starting to throb I don't feel good I'm like oh fuck I just you know it was, I overexerted myself I thought and I started driving you know 20 minutes back to my place and uh, right as I'm about to pull up I'm like 20 feet away from my house after being lost in the fucking woods for 8 hours afraid of bears open the door of my Park my car in the middle of the street, right outside the fire station. Open the door. Vomit. <laughs> Don't drink creek water, my friends. I was so afraid it was going to be something worse this morning. Um, but no, it wasn't that bad. I'm feeling fine. So It was a good day, though. Good adventure. Nothing. I, and I was, yeah, I was so angry on the hike up. I think it's part of what made me just, like, keep going. I just keep dealing with personal stuff and uh yeah the imminent fear of death really shook me out of that it was a good experience was a... I'm not really afraid of dying just want to tap in for the right reasons not because of bears because I'm a dumbass you know not living in Venice anymore now dude I was there for a week oh no I would never live anywhere near there again Venice is terrifying, man. Terrifying. Not what it used to be 10 years ago, I know. Raynad, can I come join? Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you're a nice girl that I meet in church, sure. But, you know, hey, you're watching a Hearthstone stream here. Let's be honest. What's wrong with Venice? Crime? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what's good about it? You know, it, it, it's like the rest of L.A. Every step smells like feces. Is this, dude, the amount of, yeah. There's a lot of homeless. Like, a lot. Um, a lot, a lot. Like, compared to five years ago. Um, I don't know. It's not, it's still pretty and everything. I just, uh, you're religious? Yeah. Coolest thing you've done since last stream? Dude, I make games. I don't do cool things. Since last stream. We uh, we opened a friends and family demo for the bazaar. That was kind of cool. Sent the game outside of the company for the first time. A couple of folks tried it. I, I sent it to a couple of streamers last minute. Um, Raren played it. Um, he had some super nice feedback. I was flattered. Um, yeah, a bunch of other ones I sent it to, I don't think they even opened it yet. Which I'm kind of glad I was, I think it was like a little too early anyway. So. But yeah, we'll do another, uh, another demo here in a few weeks, start of May, and then you guys will be hearing more about the game soon after that. How do you feel about backpack battles? Eh, I, yeah, that, that game made me do a lot of thinking about ownership of ideas. Yeah, like ultimately, I don't. I don't think they did anything wrong. I, I don't think anyone can own ideas. But I was a little frustrated that, like, for us as a little indie studio trying to make a game for the first time, we wanted to like share that process publicly, and then to have like the Super Auto Pets developer just clone the matchmaking system and the scoring system, which is like the only aspect of that game that's novel, and then uh, Backpack Battles copied everything else because they're friends and. Yeah, it does feel like getting front run on like an idea that I was really personally proud of and attached to, but it's a healthy experience. Like it, do it doesn't matter ultimately, like in a world where the bazaar is out, nobody plays those games and they didn't do anything wrong. Like I said, like nobody can own ideas. That's on me for like sharing them before we launch the game. Um, but yeah, it, 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 the frustrating part about it wasn't that they cloned it, it was that I posted the video like years before their game launched 
demonstrating our, our, our scoring system, our matchmaking system. It was very unique. No, no, no game had done it in the genre. And uh, everyone hated it. Like, all the community feedback was like, this is a bad change. Andre, you're an idiot. That's what you guys said. Or look at the fucking comments. And uh, it wasn't a bad idea. <laughs> These clones validated it, you know? So it's like, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Remember when you first revealed the idea? Yeah, so it's like if I didn't get the backlash before they cloned it, it would have been a lot less frustrating. But yeah, I don't know. It just it just it made me realize it's 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 exactly like Hearthstone. Everything in life <laughs> is a lot like that, you know? Like I play Hearthstone and as soon as I stream it professionally, I suddenly realize how many millions of professional Hearthstone players there are in Twitch chat. I want to describe in great detail how everything I'm doing is wrong. Now, of course, they're hard stuck rank 20 for some reason, despite their mastery of the game, but surely they must be right. And now I'm making a game for five years, and I found out that there are millions of professional game studio CEOs that know with no uncertainty how every little detail should be done and exactly why other people's projects fail. Never mind that they've never built anything in their life, let alone, like, not even a good sandwich, but... <laughs> a lot of pro game studio operators uh, in the comments section, it turns out. So, you know, at this point, I'm kind of like, <laughs> I had this moment when I was 13, and I, I don't want this to sound arrogant, because this was like very terrifying realization. Like, I realized the adults in my life were human, you know? I looked around one day when I was 13, and I realized, like, these people are dumber than me. Like, in some things that I understood well, you know? Not on everything, obviously, I was a fucking kid. But, like, that was so scary at first. Uh, and then it eventually became kind of liberating. But once you know, like, it's the blind leading the blind, you're free to just, like, independently think and do it your way. And it'll always be better. Always. So, I don't know. I, If any part of this game development process uh, went badly, it's because I kind of didn't trust in myself. And I don't know. Deferred to experts. No more expertise. We will teach. What's your role on the team? I don't know, man. I, I wear the clown suit for marketing. I do creative direction on the development of the game. I'm the CEO of the company. I'm the CFO of the company. I do a little bit of everything. I'm just, a, we have like a digital office, so I talk to every team, you know, most days. Um, check in every morning, talk to everyone regularly. I'm just sitting in my room. People pop in all the time throughout the day. Um, but mostly design. That's where I like to spend most of my time. I have a really solid uh, small design team. And uh, yeah, so that's what I like to spend most of my time on. I think that's where I can add the most value. Does chew ruin your teeth? I don't chew, no. I don't like tobacco. Raynad, how do you like the Vintage Cube drafts? Oh yeah, some guys from the server added me like uh, a month ago. I, I played I played one day, uh, like last week. Um, it was fun, yeah. Yeah, it's nice to just play like high level competitive cards again, you know? Like, I really love Vintage Cube because it, it was like, design-wise, the biggest inspiration for the Bazaar. Uh, I mean, ever since like four years ago, it we we're trying to make like an accessible version of that, right? Because the Bazaar is trying to be the best drafting game in the world, best deck building game. And uh, we learned a lot from Vintage Cube, you know? We would do these uh, at, at the, the Long Beach house where we were doing a bunch of the Bazaar design. We'd have a group of Magic players over most weeks for a while, and we had Vintage Cube. And I noticed this pattern I mean, I should, I'm not going to talk about card design, actually. You guys are fucking copy. You know, you know, you know what does bug me about Super Auto Pets and Backpack Battles? I wish they just credited it, you know? Like, I, I wouldn't need, I would even promote their game on Twitter if they were just like, hey, shout out to Raynad for, like, designing our game for us, you know? <laughs> but no, it's, uh, they pretend like they never saw it. Uh, that, that, that's a little bit of a slap in the face. That's, that's okay. We'll just take all their players in a few months. And by a few months, I mean whenever the fuck it's ready. Calm down. <laughs> it's not gonna be a few months. It'll be a big few. It will be this year, yeah.
actually this year. Would you compete in your own game? Of course. I'm gonna spend five years making a game and I'm not just gonna crush you all day one. That's the whole point, my friend. Actually, I don't know, game designers are like never good at their own game, you know? Like I'm pretty competitive though. Can't wait for your new game, I'm tired of playing TFT. Thanks man, yeah, I hope you like it. Yeah. I sent it to some TFT players. I sent it to Frodan. He played for like 30 minutes and I don't know, I got the impression he didn't want to play until there's a tutorial. So I was surprised because I'm like, man, if you learn TFT, this game's like so much easier. <laughs> but, uh, uh. It's like when you're, it's going to be like when you're a kid and you think the creator is the best at the game. Oh, look, listen, I'm going to get a pink tuxedo, some frilly collar things, some Egypt, Egyptian artifact around my neck, and I, I will humble the kids as the creator with Toon World and such. It's meant to be. What's the elevator pitch for your game? It's the best drafting game ever made. It's the first hero builder. That's what uh, I decided to call the genre. I think it's the best way to describe it. If you like RPGs or card games, I think you'll really like this game. It's kind of a hyper-concentrated, distilled version of all those games. Like really accessible and fast and it fits into your life like solitaire. You can pick it up and put it down at any time. Did you play Auto Gladiators and Dota? Um, no, I think I saw that one, the, the 1v1 hero building game. Yeah, I saw there was some Dota mod that was. You don't look high today. I'm not high most days. I did used to smoke a bunch of weed uh, for the last couple of years, and that was not serving me like a stress management tool. But yeah, I gave it up a few weeks ago. I don't think I'll pick it up again ever. Threw everything away. Thoughts on Blotra? Blotra is a great game. Yeah, Blotra is like a. A lot of similarities to the bizarre too, uh, but I, and, I, and they're, they're, they definitely didn't take, take any. I'm not claiming that, but I, I love learning from the design of it, like what, why it's fun, and uh, yeah, a lot of the mechanics are like similar to stuff we're doing in a way, right? Like they they let you enchant cards the way we do. They let you, you know, add and remove cards from your deck. Um, it's just instead of having like a, a combat where it's like two two guys with health bars fighting each other with damage. Bellatro is like, score the highest number you can through multipliers, but functionally the bazaar is super similar because when you add like a combo piece to your build in the bazaar, it's giving you like a multiplicative output compared to what you had before. So if you were doing, you know, 1,000 damage before in a fight, now you're doing 3,000 damage because you slotted in a card that tripled the, the torque on what your build is doing. And uh, see, so yeah, I, th I think like there's a little, I was kind of surprised by how similarly they played in some ways. You know, we have a boss at the end of every day, like they have a, the boss at the end of every ante. Um, our boss is another player. Is it similar to Slay the Spire at all? It is, yeah, yeah. So we, we started making the Bazaar right before Slay the Spire came out. And I, I really wanted to make like the first big digital deck building game. 
And Slay the Spire is a masterpiece. They, they, they crushed it. I'm um, really glad that game came out. But yeah, if you like Slay the Spire, it's like, you'll, you'll definitely like this game. It's like uh, just the drafting, not the fighting part. And uh, it's PvP. So instead of fighting a boss, you fight a player. So there's a lot more variety in what you go up against. You look like you're in a peaceful location. I can't complain, you know? It's, it's not bad. It's a nice setting. It's pretty. Peace is a state of mind, though, my friend, not a location. I know the game's going to be good because you look like you've given up on shoes to work at the Google campus. I have given up shoes. I've been, I've been living a Adidas slides life for like four years. I bought a pair of these slides like for 20 bucks like forever ago. They're so worn in and I can't buy the same like the same ones anywhere. I can't find them. So, you know. Where do you want to live ultimately? Yeah, I don't know, I've been thinking about that a lot, you know. I'm, I'm a 32 year old guy. Everything in my body has been screaming to have kids for the last few years. I've not, I've not. Yeah. It'll be up to the wife, if and when I get married. But I'm conflicted. I don't know that I do want to get married, actually. Some shit's about to go down. I don't know if it's good to raise a kid in that world. And, uh... Fear is a bad reason to not do any, to do or not do stuff. I guess that's not the main reason, but I, uh, I don't know. First Corinthians 7 is kind of on my mind. It kind of talks about merits of marriage from a biblical perspective. And it kind of says either way is fine, you know, whatever you want to do, but it says it's a little easier to make it to the other side if, uh, if you're single, so. Why you wanna hurt me, girl? How about adoption? I, I don't know that that would quell the hormonal impetus that's driving me to, to want kids. You know? It's not all hormonal, I guess. You religious now? I guess, yeah. I've been building a relationship with God for a while. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a fan of religions, for what it's worth, you know. But yeah. Do you believe in Jesus or read the Bible for secular uh, reasons? Uh, both. Yeah, both. I, I, I started by just like following business mostly. And I, you know, I've been running this company for a decade. I've been working such a long time on this project. I really wanted it to be successful. So I studied business uh, the same way I study games to get to the top. You know, I go up the leaderboard. I see what the best players in the world are doing. And usually it's not that impressive. You just out execute them. And uh, so I just kept going up the leaderboard in the real world. And it was, it was pretty eye-opening, uh, the, the way everything's organized. Like, the, the notion of nation-states is, like, illusory. <laughs> and it's been a one-world government for, like, forever, probably. But, like, it, I mean, at, at least uh, since, since the early 1900s. And um, I ask myself, what is this system optimizing for? You know, and it's not profit. Everyone hand waves away all these nefarious things like, oh, there people do it because of greed. It's, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the higher up the leaderboard you go, sort of, the, the, the higher up the yeah. people. Some people do it for greed along the way, but the people at the tippy top um, do it because of their faith. And it's not. Um, Yeah, so I, a bunch of stuff really lined up with the Bible. Uh, as somebody that hasn't read it, the thing, things that I've heard about it, and so I realized, like, fuck, I might as well read this thing, huh? It's been a, a whole life I haven't. So I'm in the middle of doing that now. It's good stuff. 
we're going to church, found a good, uh, good community. It's been good. What made you want to develop a relationship with God originally? Uh, my mistakes, mostly. Like, uh, like you know when you're you're about to do the wrong thing, and, and you know that it's the wrong thing, and there's this thing in your gut that's like telling you it's the wrong thing, and you do it anyway because you're an ape. And the gut, the gut, the thing in the gut is always right. Like every time I don't listen to it, I would get punished. And uh, especially in card games, that's like where I learned a bunch of stuff. And so. I think I think that's God. It, no, I, I'm the guy that wants to make the mistake. It's telling me not to. It's two agents, you know. I uh, and its intentions are clearly good for me, and it's smarter than me. I don't know. And I, yeah, the, the more you talk to it, I guess the closer that relationship becomes. Yeah. Knife Juggler made Rain Ad religious. It did, it did. Knife Juggler convinced me that Satan is real. If Satan's real, so is God. Ego kills the gut. True. Very true. I've been sitting in an uninsulated room for months awaiting this stream. Uninsulated? That sucks, man. It sounds cold. I hope you got a blanket. Do you think there's confirmation bias? I don't, I don't know that it applies to the reasoning I just gave with the thing in the gut, because the, the point is that it's a different agent than you are, right? You're the one that wants to do the mistake. It's telling you don't. Even if you're not quite sure why you shouldn't sometimes. It knows that you shouldn't, you know? And, uh, yeah. The song is religious, yeah. Where's the guitar? That's a good question, man. Storage, along with everything else. Yeah, man, I, I... I was traveling so much over the last, like, year and a half. I shed so much of my stuff so I could just live out of a suitcase. And it's been so liberating, but I, I ended up putting all this shit in storage, and I'm just paying for it every month, and I, I'm not that attached to the stuff. I don't need it, because I didn't bring it with me. I'm just, I'm just realizing, like, man, I wish I just lit it all on fire, you know? It would just been so much easier. But now the surfboard lives to this day somewhere. It's in storage, yeah, yeah, along with the guitar, along with all of it. Still have no idea where you'll end up. Yeah, I play it by ear. Um, yeah, I picked this place like a week before I had to move here. Probably will do the same uh, next month. I'm moving middle of next month. But I, I, I don't know. I, I might have to be on the road uh, for work. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Oh shit, that reminds me. There's a trip I was supposed to go on. Fuck. When, what day was that? Uh, we 
Your thoughts on AI? <sighs> Look. You know, you know what really brought me around to religion? It ties into this AI thing. I, I, my eyes opened up to how the world was organized. And one of the things that was so surprising at first is how difficult it is to manufacture scarcity. Like, scarcity is an illusion. We live in an, a universe of infinite abundance, infinite abundance. And just the amount of... The amount of shit that has to go wrong to create scarcity... It, it, I mean, it, it is like theatrical art. Europe burns one-third of the food that it grows. Dozens of free energy inventions have been suppressed just in the last century, but I think it goes back to the pyramids, like probably for all of human history. All medicine that cures is suppressed. And you need an inflationary centralized money supply. And if any one of these things is not fucked, you have infinite free everything. Like with sound money alone, the price of everything approaches the, <laughs> the utility cost over time. Everything gets almost free very quickly. And so you, you kind of have to orchestrate this fuckery from so many different angles to create scarcity. And that's so backwards to how I viewed the world. Because I, I thought we have scarcity because we haven't created the abundance yet. But in practice, this is not, not the reality. For every commodity, you have a cartel that's consolidated the production of it. And then they partner with the state to regulate away all competition. And so you have scarcity in all commodities. The natural capitalistic process does not make things cheaper over time because there is no competition. There's no free market. And so it's, it's, it, really, it really opened my eyes. I don't know, it's very interesting like how, how it actually... And so I asked myself, what is this system optimizing for, you know? And it, it's like depravity is like the best way to put it. It's, it's trying to steer me into making decisions that don't serve me. And uh, I got really deep into that rabbit hole for a while. I was really mad about it at first. I was like, oh shit, let me just figure out how I can outsmart these people and fix these worldly problems. And, and it just dawned on me, um, it's meant to be unfixable. You know, a god kind of designed it that way. Like, Satan is properly in charge for a reason. And, uh, on this world. And so, I saw the folly of going down that route. It starts to look very Napoleonic or Hitlery when you try to fix this. And it really just lined up with the Bible, the, the intentions of the powers that be. And so, yeah, that's kind of what opened my mind to it. Anyway, your original question is AI. What do I think about AI? You know, I think we'll get this dumbed down version of it that makes, I don't know, user interface a little more efficient or something. Like, you know, it's not, <laughs> we're not getting the real shit. You know what I mean? Because um, if we did, again, everything becomes free and that's untenable. And so, yeah, and so, yeah, I'm not that invested in it. Destiny is a propagandist. And I, I pity the folks that watch him. You know, small men follow small men. What about crypto? Well, see, that's okay. All crypto is a scam because uh, it has a CEO. 
And Bitcoin originally um, was not a scam. It was made of good intentions, um, but um, today that is Bitcoin is also corrupted um, through SegWit and the consolidation of miners. And so, um, like the world economy will roll over to Bitcoin. It's something I felt really passionate about because I was like, oh man, let's fix the world. You know, if we fix the money, you fix everything kind of. But it, it's, we're not meant to fix this world. It'll get fixed right after World War III. But we're meant to learn from this experience, you know. It's, a, it's an accountability simulator, a humility simulator. It's like a spiritual kindergarten that we're meant to learn from before we can graduate into civilized society. That's kind of my take on it, so. And, all, you know, the, the, more, the more I looked into the machinations of, you know, the globalist bullshit that, that's screwing us, the, the, the angrier I got, and then eventually I realized I'm looking at it completely the wrong way. Completely the wrong way. It's tempting to feel like you're a victim. It's so easy to be a victim. Because then your problems are someone else's doing, not your own. I'm not a victim of anything. Not of my government. Not of anything. All of my misery is of my own making. It's like Tom and Jerry both lose at a card game. Tom asks himself what he could have done better. Jerry blames luck. Who's right? Tom climbs the leaderboard forever. Jerry stagnates. The only difference in their viewpoint is their relationship with accountability. Right, Tom holds himself accountable, asks himself what he could have done better. And Jerry blames luck, blames God, anything other than himself. And in doing so, he abdicates his agency and doesn't improve as a player. And so, I think, I think that idea extends to everything in life. And a big part of the lesson we're meant to learn here is to take accountability for our own mistakes and our own choices, now that we've been, been given the power of choice. You know, we're held responsible for the choices we make. And so, you know, Christ teaches us to hold ourselves accountable. Lucifer blames God. Christ looks at the Adam and Eve story and sees the Garden of Eden as a paradise that we ruined through our mistake. Lucifer looks at the Adam and Eve story and he sees the Garden of Eden as a prison a matrix of God's nefarious design that imprisoned Adam and Eve and subjected them to his rules. And just by framing it that way, he's the hero liberating them, by bringing the light, uh, you know, the gift of knowledge to Adam and Eve. And the only difference between the two perspectives is uh, their relationship with accountability. Right? Christ holds himself accountable. Lucifer blames God. Again, very, very, way easier to blame your problems on someone else. And so, yeah, I think Lucifer is what you get when you're like at the apex of the tech tree, but stupid. It's envy is like the root. So it, the real battle is like in the heart, you know. Everything else is an extension of that. Like, no. Yeah. Okay, Pr Prometheus is like Lucifer's take on what happened in the Garden of Eden story. All right, Prometheus stole the fire from God and gave it to man. Prometheus is a celebrated thief. That's his perspective, and and yeah, the consolidated power structure of the Earth is. You know, towing, towing the line with him right there. So yeah, I mean, I, I think we're about to see a bigger version of what happened in the 30s, uh, in Germany especially. You know, I think fascism will come to America. I think it'll be carrying a cross. I think it'll lead us into the Third World War. 
against the globalist machinations that everyone sees themselves as a victim of. And some people fall prey to that and vilify their neighbor, and vilify some religion, some country. And other people hold themselves accountable for their own shit. And that's, that's kind of separating the wheat from the chaff, you know? It's what Lucifer does best. He's God's most effective sorting mechanism. Now, at first, he strengthens heaven by staging a coup and taking the worst of them down here with him. Now he's strengthening earth by separating the wheat from the chaff here. And so. Brother, the USA is not the globalist system. It's controlled by the same power structure as every other you know, country. There, there are no countries. It's a story we're told. It gives a lot of optionality to the ruling class. They can instigate a war anywhere, anytime they want. It's good to have the illusion of nation states. Like they, they absorb all blame for the bad things that happen. But but it's it's one country. It's a it's a one world government. It has been always always. Our banks funded Mao. The one time I've been banned on Twitter is when I responded to Elon's tweet right after he bought the website saying that. Started getting some, um, I don't know, some, some China propaganda account was like posting hate threads on a bizarre Reddit. They were so mad about this tweet. Nothing pisses people off like the truth, you know. <laughs> Big fan of stateless Marxist. I am not Marxist or Leninist. So that that is the. <laughs> I'm not invested in the organization of the world. It's unfixable by design. Don't stress about it. Work on, work on you. And I'll do my thing, make a sweet game. Hope it makes some kids happy, try to learn spiritually in the time I have here. And if I do it good enough, at some point the state will kill me. Here's hoping. Noodle become a multi-millionaire that went down the rabbit hole of psychedelics. Nah, not, not exactly. What do you do when a World War III breaks out? Listen to God. Nah, it'll be, there's no escaping, there's no escaping it, right? Like I, I thought, oh, should I like bunker up, start buying canned fish, firearms, like, you know, and it, you can't be too invested in this. It's not the point. This whole stream has been the realest shit I've heard on the website. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I was thinking of making a YouTube video at some point about some of this stuff. It's been a lot of it's been top of mind for me for a while, but not about the the, the government stuff, but about like accountability. I might make a video on that. getting cold out here. Nighttime lake. Ah, it's not that good of a view anymore without lighting. I got banned on Twitter for a day. Yeah, Elon made some post fear-mongering war between China and the U.S. And I posted a tweet that said, 
you know, our banks funded Mao. Or I, I said the same regime that controls the UN controls China. Our banks funded Mao, and war may happen, but it would be orchestrated and not the result of two opposing regimes. That was my tweet. And I got insta banned after I got like 10,000 views. And then I couldn't even look at my own profile. They didn't tell me I was banned. It was just glitchy and pitch black anytime anyone would go on my profile for like two days. And, uh, and then I, this propagandist started posting hate threads uh, on the bizarre Reddit trying to like punish me for this. <laughs> and, that, uh, and so I thought, man, how can I magnify this tweet the most? This guy is so angry. He was writing dissertations on why my tweet was the least acceptable thing to ever be written by anyone ever. And, uh, and I re the way I respond to that is like usually trying to get under the skin even more. But it's not, it's not a responsible approach. I thought about it at the end of the day and I'm like, ah, you know, I'm working so hard to make a good game. I want the game to be successful. Do I really want like to make it harder for people in China to play and stuff? Like, I don't know. I was like, fuck it, whatever. I'll delete the tweet. I don't need the hassle. I couldn't delete it because I couldn't use my account for two days. But I've been on Twitter for 10 years. Not once have they ever banned me for anything. But I responded to Elon's tweet and they perma... They, not perma. They banned me for two days on the account. Ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so I, I just decided to, to delete the tweet just to... Which I really, I really don't like, but it was only my ego that wanted to like keep it up. Just like fuck this guy, you know. But it's not a good reason to. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how the world is organized. There's no avoiding the Third World War. It's orchestrated, like all of them. You know. You ever throw stuff at geese? No, man. Are there any individual actors at the top wealth? I'm, it's all like vassalship, you know? It's like one country invades another country and they leave the existing ruler in charge as like a token control, like, you know, he does the local governance or whatever, but really they're a vassal state. That's every country you've ever heard of. That's, you know, and, and, and the, the, the controller of, of these, you know, vassal states. Uh, is, is not anyone you would have heard of or seen a photo of. Or, you know. But I look at what this one world government is optimizing for, and um, by God, <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's hard not to call it Satan, you know, because it's not optimizing for profit or suffering. It's not trying to enslave us. Like, we've been enslaved for millennia. It's, it's, it's like... It's optimizing for depravity. It's trying to steer you towards... trying to steer you away from God is what it's trying to do. It's trying to make you hate your neighbor, hate yourself, be fearful, be arrogant. All the qualities you don't want. Hedonism, yeah, all of them. It's like an inversion of it, exactly, yeah. Because that, that's what envy is, right? That's the, I look at like, I'm trying to see a like Lucifer's perspective, right? That's the, Pr Prometheus is his perspective on Garden of Eden, like I said. I've been thinking a lot about that because I want to empathize, you know, try to understand that side, you know, or the side of masonry, you know, his action arm or whatever. And, and I want to see their perspective. And I, I really think it's just rooted in one man's envy. Envy is the most dangerous emotion. Because it's always accompanied by contempt, jealousy, and blame towards the person you're envying. Uh, like the, the most evil behavior stems from that, I would say. And Lucifer envies God. And he wants to be worshipped like God. And so, you know, like the purpose of the Third World War, I think, would be to engender worship. Like the, the, the notion is to create an inescapable global conflict that wears everyone down to the point of spiritual, moral, financial exhaustion, to the point where they're 
receptive to a savior, where they've just experienced the folly of godlessness. And they're open-minded to a new type of Messiah, you know? And then he comes and the undiscerning will follow. There'll be a brief period of pseudo peace on earth. You know, the econ and, you know, and he's just gonna solve the problems he created to try, you know. He'll bring back some of the, the medicine that's been suppressed and free energy even maybe. And, you know, it's you know, it'll be a Bitcoin run economy or whatever, but uh it's very temporary. And then, you know, allegedly, according to the Bible, if you believe in it, you know, Jesus comes in and kicks ass and sets up his millennial king. Whoa, man, that went off the rails a bit. It's kind of like, you know, I think when I do live streaming or like YouTube videos, I don't think I want to have chat on ever. Because every time there's comments like these, and it's just like these small men that are like, Raynad, do you know that you've just gone outside of your allotted range of topics? You're not allowed to talk about these things. Mom, Raynad's thinking the wrong things. Cancel him. But, uh, you know, I say this with love, go fuck yourself, you know? I, I got work to do on the spirituality thing, as you can tell. Yeah. Last time I tuned in, you were interested by masonry. Is there, yeah, I had fr I have friends that are 30, well, I know people that are 33rd degree. I've been invited multiple times, not, not by multiple Masons and different, like last month I was invited again uh, on, on, on Vashon. And uh, yeah, I did a lot of looking into it, you know? And it's untenable, for, like I'll never fucking, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do oaths, all right? Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, at the lower levels, it's just a boomer fraternity. It doesn't look too malicious, but yeah, at the higher levels, it's instigated the last three world wars. And I think it goes back to the pyramids, probably like pharaonic bullshit. Like, you know, like, well, let's not argue about whether free energy exists and all that. I know some of you guys are skeptical about that, but like as a thought experiment, let's say free energy existed and there was some sort of tech tree apex, right? And, and, and you went on your little apex of the te tech tree spaceship and you visited an up and coming planet. And you try to share this technology with a less evolved society. What happens? I would bet you the same thing happens every time. The same thing that happens with every commodity and every resource on earth, I bet you happens when you give them that tech. Whoever's trying to be the big monkey in that society will take it and make sure only he has it. That's what small men do. They want to maximize the delta, the distance between them and everyone else. That's how they feel less small. I know something you don't know, right? So they, they try to monopolize information. They try to, you know, they say this, this, the, <laughs> the pyramid is for the the pharaohs, you know, not for everybody anymore, that kind of thing, you know? And then, yeah, I think these institutions just self-repeat over time, you know? Weak men pass it on to weak men, they raise weak men. At some point, it's a globalist machination impoverishing everything, including themselves, but they're too dumb to see it, so. It is what it is. Don't get salty about it. You're not a victim of them. You're a victim of your own bad decisions. That's where you have agency. All of my misery is of my own making. I own it.
No, 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 it's not all Masons in charge of it. No, 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 no. They're, they're just one of many institutions on that path, you know, and then they're, they're, it's not monolithic, you know, they're, they're all, there's all sorts of people responsible, you know, we are responsible. But yeah, their god is Lucifer. Small men follow small men. Now, Lucifer is not some horned Satan y, you know, he'll look like a good guy. He'll look human. He'll even hover and heal people and do some magic tricks and shit. But, uh, it's bullshit. You'll see it. What did you learn from your 33rd degree friends? I thought they were very close friends of mine, but I've also spent a lifetime playing card games. And there are many times in my life when I look someone in the eye and I just know they're lying to my face. I just know. And I'm, I am not wrong about that feeling. I've trained it into myself in for, like for many, many years. All my teenage years, all my adult life. You guys know, like, you know, I, it's not it's not just magic, you know, I've, whatever, I'm not the best poker player in the world, but I have 5,000 hours or something against, against professional competition, and it's, I know when people are lying to me when they're bad liars, and uh, I didn't get a lot of truth from them, but I looked into the people that executed, and what they were saying and uh, you, it, whatever, it's not important. I, the, not, none of this, none of this conspiratorial shit is going to lead you anywhere good, man. It, all it does, it'll, it'll make you feel like a victim because it's easy to be a victim. Don't, don't blame these. Or, it's all a distraction. But that's where I started because I, I started with like, how do you fix the world and like, where are these problems coming from? And I, you can't just point to like one institution and say, oh, these these guys are the, the fucking Illuminati or whatever. It's not. It is a consolidated power structure, I think, under one man, but it, it's not, um, it doesn't serve anyone to get into the details of it. It doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's already written how it ends. Don't stress about it. Do you think the Antichrist will return in our lifetime? Yes. Yeah. Right after World War III. I'm not, I'm not at that part yet. Like I've, I've read, you know, I've read Revelations and I've read like passages of the Bible and I've, I've talked to religious folks, but I'm really working on reading the Bible through end to end, like a couple times right now. So I don't have a, you know, I'm. It's the closest thing to truth I've found so far uh, in terms of like written word, but uh, I'm not an expert by any means. You know, it's a pretty recent like thing for me. When will World War III happen? I, who knows? I can only guess, you know, I, I can see the trajectory the algorithm is going. Like I, on Twitter, I, I, I was following like 1,200 people. And uh, one day, for a bunch of reasons, I decided to unfollow everybody, literally everybody, except the bizarre. I follow one account now. And as soon as I did this, all the posts in my feed from other people that I knew went away because I unfollowed them. And all that was left was propaganda. And that propaganda has a very clear trajectory. People are going to get real mad at us. At a, well, all right, it's not important to get into the details. But yeah, I think there's going to be some... Uh, I think they're teeing up Donnie to come in and, you know. 30s Germany all over again. And it'll be a fucking mess. All he had left was Russian bots. Nah, it's all US bots. Man. Like Elon posts, a lot of Cybertruck shit too. <laughs> uh. 
Has AI been introduced to society with destructive intention? No. There's only one intelligence in the universe. One actor playing infinite characters. That's how this thing is engineered. And if you made AI that was good enough, it's not really any different from talking to a person. Like at some point you're you're just interacting with yourself. It's it's this sounds abstract. <clears throat> There's nothing to be afraid of with AI. No, I've not tried DMT. Are you so sure about all this? How it's engineered. That, 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 that experience really sent me off on the religion thing. I, God showed me something once, but I don't really want to share. Oh, he, I did share. He, he showed me. I asked how it's engineered, and I kept asking for two years. One day he showed me. One intelligence, infinite actors. Another way to think about it, there's a little animated story called The Egg you could find on YouTube. It's like eight minutes long. It's, it's a good watch. But the idea is that like, you live your life, and then after your life, you live someone else's life. My life, your mom's life, you live everyone's life. One player for infinite characters. Now, I'm just a different run of yours. One intelligence, animating everything inanimate, to interact with itself. Is being a singularity boring? And so, the first thing that comes out of that perspective is the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated, you know? You're, when you're hurting someone, you're literally hurting yourself, literally. When you're help, helping someone, you're literally helping yourself. That's God's perspective, he is everyone. And from that perspective, what do you optimize for? What, like, what, what do you want? You want to increase, like, net fun, just like a good game designer. Anything that increases net fun uh, is God's way. And anything that's zero sum, you know, you're just mugging yourself. Sorry, you're stealing from yourself. But if you don't believe the world is organized that way, if you don't think that's how it's engineered, if you think you're separate from everyone else, then zero sum suddenly doesn't feel zero sum, because you're gaining, but you never feel the cost of that theft, right? When you're gaining at the expense of someone else. Because you're separate from them, so you, you would never pay the cost in that kind of architecture. But that, that, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's, a, it it's, a, it's a single player game masquerading as a multiplayer game. It's um, perfectly balanced, because you're only harming yourself. It's pretty brilliant design. It's like a self-induced schizophrenia on a cosmic level. Pretty neat. All right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom quick.
No, no, no. He's right. You're just asleep on the matrix. No, 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 brother. Be careful with that word. That's the Luciferian perspective. Matrix, prison, all the new age shit. Anytime you hear the word matrix, red pill, ascension, this is, these are Luciferian tenets. It, <clears throat> it's a, uh, It's a Gnostic belief system. Gnosticism was the first conspiracy theory. Some people would argue like one of the bigger threats to the church in, uh, since the, in the history of Christianity. And uh, the notion behind Gnosticism is that reality is a prison architected by a nefarious demiurge, a nefarious god that has imprisoned you inside of it. Once again, right? Victimhood. It's a, it's a belief system founded in victimhood. And all this new age matrix shit will steer you towards it. All the conspiracy stuff will steer you towards it because it's in lockstep. And it, <laughs> it wants, <laughs> Lucifer wants you to feel imprisoned because by framing the Garden of Eden that way, a prison that God designed, he's the hero liberating you from it with the gift of knowledge, right? Now, Garden of Eden wasn't a paradise that we ruined through our mistake. No, it was a prison that he liberated us from. That's the story, that's the perspective he wants you to adopt. And so the conspiratorial shit is really dangerous to go down because it's really gonna make you feel like a victim. And when you feel like a victim, which is very easy and tempting to do, your misery is someone else's fault instead of your own. The story of Prometheus is what they're trying to steer you towards. That is Lucifer's perspective on the Garden of Eden. Lucifer is not defeated. He's not at war with it. God is sovereign. Lucifer is his agent. And just a, uh, it's like a chaperone on this planet, you know, like a tough love teacher. Resistance training for the soul. And once uh, you ripen, and you can resist his bullshit good enough, then you graduate. You do the next thing, you know, which I, I don't know what that is. I think it's something more Star Trek y, but I don't know. Maybe I'll go in. I'm never shaving again, Bagel. Sorry to disappoint you. If I wasn't supposed to have it, why does it keep growing? I think hair is like an extension of the nervous system or something. I don't know. I find it easier to intuit things the longer it gets. 
or it's a placebo effect. Placebos are just as effective, aren't they? Do you think your hair gives you strength like Samson? The Samson story, I think, is uh, had more to do with cum. Not, to, I mean, I'm sorry to, to be a little crass about it, but yeah, there's um, one thing that's pretty universal uh, in in old religions and mysticism and mystery schools and all the occult stuff. One one of the universal things is like semen retention. Basically, you lose spiritual power when you blow your load. And the Samson story is kind of a, that's what it's symbolic of, right? Because he sleeps with the harlot Delilah or something, and then that's, that's what made him lose his hair. So it was, the, it was nutting that, <laughs> that did it, not the loss of hair, I guess, is the, the esoteric context behind that. So that's why I'm balding. Actually, yeah, it, it doesn't help. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see. You guys still want to listen to music, or should I just uh, keep it quiet? You tell me. Oh, I love this uh, Ethiopian song. It's a banger. <laughs> Rain, when's the last time you talked to your brother Mitchell? It's been a while, yeah. Probably, I don't know, half a year. Hope he's good. said you had an encounter with God. I'm intrigued by this type of stuff. That's no, not important. He, he showed me the, the thing I explained with uh, one intelligence, infinite actors. That's what he showed me. And that that's that's what brought me to Jesus because I was like, man, if I adopt that perspective, what's the, the first thing that comes out of that is the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated. And it's, it all tracked. And I was like, oh shit. Like, it, opened, it really opened my eyes to how to live like it that, that that's what it means by like remembering the face of god when you look at people it's like you're looking at yourself you know it's you're an instantiation i, th I think like it it's kind of abstract but like i yeah i think god is like a 3d fractal or something like that like i don't know if you guys have seen like a mandelbrot set maybe i can pull this up hold on So this thing's called a, a Mandelbrot set. What you can basically do is, it's a really simple equation. You like square X and you, you, you plug the result of that equation back into itself. And uh, you plot a point on a graph and whatever, you just keep running the same equation and putting the result of that equation back into itself. And it draws this pattern. And this pattern has a bunch of interesting properties. I basically, I think the universe, or God, is like a 3D version of this. So the, the whole thing collectively, let's call that the universe, right? If some of you don't believe in God, let's, let's call it the universe. And the, the thing that's so interesting about this cardioid shape is you can zoom into it forever, literally forever, and you can see it self-replicates indefinitely. So, no matter how far you zoom in, it keeps recreating itself. You can see these are like the same. And this is like a two-dimensional version of one of these. 
I think the universe is like a 3D one. Or a 4D one. Some amount of dimensions. And you see this thing? Look at how fucking far we've zoomed in. And look at this. It's the same cardioid again. The same cardioid. Identical. And this little cardioid, you can zoom into this one forever. And it keeps recreating itself. Infinitely. And so, so the idea is like, this whole thing, this big thing, let's call this God or the universe. <laughs> These little ones. This one right here is little one. That's you. God made you in his image. And inside of you, there's the whole universe. Brilliant architecture. But yeah, one intelligence. I, one thing that's really interesting about this, I don't think there's any gaps. Like, there's no separation. It's just uh, unified. Just like in physics, you know? We, we, we perceive the world as you being separate from others, but you can't actually show the separation in physics. Everything's connected. <clears throat> Uh, this is like, this is, this is kind of what, what, like, as above, so below. It's a fractal. It's a fucking fractal. Like, uh, a galaxy is an atom kind of thing. Identical in structure. Turtles all the way down, indeed. When are we sending some Hearthstone? As soon as I break out the time machine, my friend. I, I, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but it's 2024. All right, this is a bizarre waiting room now. Please explain how we can avoid Lucifer's plan. Well, like I said, like I said, I think I think the root, the crux of the difference between Christ and Lucifer's perspective, is accountability. It's your relationship with accountability. Right? Christ teaches us to hold ourselves accountable, and Lucifer blames God, blames everyone else. So, this is why I keep using the Garden of Eden thing as an example. It's a, it's a story that we know of, even if you're not religious, high level. And two intelligent men can look at that same story and draw completely opposite conclusions just because they have a different relationship with accountability, right? Christ sees the Garden of Eden as a paradise that we ruined through our mistake. And Lucifer sees the Garden of Eden as a prison, like a, a matrix of God's nefarious design that he liberated us from with the gift of knowledge. And the thing about seeing things as a prison, seeing yourself as a victim, is it makes your problems somebody else's fault. You're abdicating your responsibility. You're not holding yourself accountable for your problems. You're blaming it on the state, or on God, or on luck, or on circumstances. Or in, in your relationships, you'll blame it on what the other person did. And so if you want to avoid Lucifer's plans, just own your shit. And don't do all the unsavory, comfortable things that you'll be pressured to do once shit hits the, you know, global war fan. Many religious people are not accountable because they think it's God's plan. I would argue those people aren't religious, they just call themselves that. It's like in every institution, there's posers. Did Lucifer delay the bizarre release? Nothing delayed the bizarre release, because we never announced a release date. We have not had a single delay. 
But uh, I do, uh, even if it were delayed, I would not blame it on Lucifer, that's the point. I would blame it on myself. <clears throat> the bizarre thing is like a prime example, right? You guys are salty about it or just looking for an attack vector and so you wanna blame me. But really, it's your expectations that are at fault. No matter what happened when the game launched, you would compare it to Hearthstone. Hearthstone took seven years to make. Seven years, starting with Blizzard. You know, I had to build a studio from the ground up, and we're launching it in five. And it's a bigger game, and it's a better game. So, I have nothing to apologize to you for, buddy. That shifting blame, like I said, there is no blame because nothing is wrong. It's ahead of schedule. Is there a link to this playlist? Yeah, dude, same one since 2012. I don't know if that link still works. What kind of work are you doing on the bazaar these days? All sorts of work. I'm the CEO and CFO of the studio. I do the design work with a couple other designers. That's where I try to spend the bulk of my time. I operate the company day to day. I mean, all, all I am is in the office all day till like five, eight to five, and then I you know, stay awake for a few hours and we'll run it back the day after. What is the Bazaar's monetization scheme? Something that, like that's a topic that just you guys aren't able to have a good faith discussion on, much like religion, but I'm not gonna let your ignorance stop me from talking about the things on top of my mind. Monetization isn't something you can talk about in good faith with, with any gamer. Um, there's actually no monetization plan that hasn't been vilified uh, since like $20 PS2 titles. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's, uh, no matter what it is, uh, you're gonna write mean things about it and convince yourself that you don't like it. Let's just be honest about it. Uh, you, you, even in asking the question, you framed it as a scheme. Like, <laughs> you go make your game, buddy. Let's see who plays it, all right? I'll, I'll make mine. I'll monetize it how I want. You know, I don't know anything about the Quakers. I used to like their oats, I guess. Crypto is a scam. Yeah, crypto is a scam. All crypto is a CEO. I don't know if Bitcoin's a scam. See, that's a, yeah, I mean, that, that's the, yeah, this crypto thing is so tragic. Like, uh, we never announced anything having to do with crypto. I never, I never said anything about it. I think I used the word blockchain once in like an update video on YouTube or something. But people who hate me on the internet, and, you know, I've always had them. They just make forum posts and lie, you know? Because, like, in the absence of, like, big, terrible things you've done, they start making them up. Because the, the truth doesn't matter. What matters is they don't like you. That's the conclusion. So now they got to try to get other people on board with that. And so people started spreading this rumor, like, Bizarre has crypto. Bizarre has crypto. Tempo never announced anything about that. I never announced anything about that. Nobody said anything about that but it's like this rumor that just keeps going and 
here you are still repeating it, you know, like... And I dignify it with responses, which I think is, like, the mistake. What I should do is, like, permaban mentions of it, I guess? I don't know. I... There's very little to be gained from this, like, two-way process of discussion, I feel like. You know, like, I like answering questions sometimes, but... I don't think people ask things in good faith. I think, like... They have a way... They, they have some sort of way they're feeling about you, and then what they type works backwards from that feeling. Not reality, not... You know. Yeah, and then the, then the next guy says, Don't feed the trolls. Dude, you, you say, Don't feed the trolls. But, like, Atrioc fucking talked about the bazaar on his stream, like, a week ago or something. And he said the same crypto rumor. Like, to a fucking audience of whatever the fuck. Like, he just lies about our game. From something we never announced or said anything about. I am kind of interested in letting people take skins on chain. Like, I do think that's a cool option to have that you don't really get with Steam. Because right, then you can trade your skins for dollars instead of Steam bucks. But, uh, you know, it doesn't... More like a website feature I'm excited by down the line. Not really like... I don't know, I don't know what that has to do with crypto. But to, to, to people, like the word blockchain, crypto, and Bitcoin, they're all like the same thing. Because they don't do any research on any of it. So, I don't know. It is what it is. The, the point is, you guys can't have a good faith discussion about it. And every other good design decision that I've announced in the game, you guys hated. Which is good feedback, because, you know, a clock that's six hours ahead is equally reliable. Like, I was a sandwich delivery driver before I was doing this, and I remember I asked chat, like, the first night my stream blew up, should I quit my job to, to do this full time? And, like, 90% of people said, don't do it, it's a terrible idea. And so that's how I knew it was the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, I, I often I often lean on you guys for Hearthstone advice the same way. Um, but, yeah. You play any video games at the moment? Uh, just bizarre, really. Yeah, I, play, I played, like, a, a day of Bellatro. That was kind of fun. Um... I played some Vintage Cube. There's like a little Discord server where some some uh, Magic Pros run games all the time. I'll try to do that a little more. They had some poker players come in for a bit. I'm like, oh, I wasn't there when the fish were. They had some big money matches. That would have been fun. Brother, why would I try backpack battles when I play the Bazaar every day? <laughs> it's... I played Backpack Battles four years ago when I posted that prototype on YouTube. Do you still voice the pinata card? I'm thinking about voicing something. I want to voice like a merchant. But I'm kind of nervous about just like taking one of our existing ones. I kind of want to like... I don't, is it arrogant to make a Raynad merchant? I kind of want my own character. Made in your own image. <laughs> Dude, turtles all the way down. Exactly. Name it Daniel. I still think about the in crowd. Oh no. <laughs> I'm still trying to forget. You can't cue into yourself with facing. Are you into meditation or ice baths? No. I mean, I do think for extended periods of time while not doing anything else, but I don't know if that's meditation exactly.
You still friends with Train? I mean, me and Train have always been on good terms. I haven't talked to him in a long ass time. He was trying to get me on his podcast a bunch, and I feel like a dick. I was like, not jumping on the opportunity because it was nice to invite me. I just, uh, I was sort of like completely gone from the streaming world at that time, and yeah, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't in the mood for, for doing it. But no, I'll, I'll, I'll put the clown suit back on as we get closer to launch. I recently read The Creature from Jekyll Island. Do you have any more book recommendations? The Bible. Because I read, I read that book. That's a lie. I read part of that book. But I, I looked up the topic from all sorts of other sources. And yeah, it's really easy to get mad at the machinations of banking. And you think, man, if we just solved this problem, we solved so many other problems and perverse incentives in the world. And I... Trust me, brother, it's... This world is fucked by design. It needs to be right now as a test. And uh, don't stress about it. It can't be fixed. It's unfixable. I, prom I promise you, I've done a great deal of looking into it. It won't serve you to dig into the mechanics of how it's fucked. Try to be the best man you can. Hold yourself accountable for your mistakes. And uh, if you're interested in what's gonna go down and what has gone down and why, Kind of more of the macro story. I'd recommend the Bible. Maybe like New World Translation is like more contemporary English, but you could do King James or whatever. Yeah. They're all pretty much legitimate. Do you view most of the Old Testament as metaphorical? Well, before I landed on the Bible, you know, I was, I was into more of the esoteric religion stuff, mysticism. I was reading like Epic of Gilgamesh and, and a bunch of the old um, pre-flood texts, like Sumerian shit. And it, the Old Testament really lines up with it quite a bit, I think. Um, so I, I, you could call it mythological to some extent, but no, I, th I think it's a, relatively accurate historical record. In your opinion, Reyna, this world cannot be saved, but can it be once all this stuff happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after World War III, Lucifer comes in, you know, trying to engender worship for himself for a short period of time. And he'll create, like, fake peace on Earth for a short period. Right when everyone thinks it's they're finally safe, then Jesus comes in and uh, destroys the nation-states and sets up the Millennial Kingdom. And that, that, that's how it gets unfucked. Um, good leadership for once. It's hard to imagine. I hope we get telepathy back. I, I think that's what the one language world was before Babylon, you know. They got rid of the telepathy, now we have to babble different languages, verbally. How primitive. I want to communicate in ideas. Like, at any, any time I feel like God has talked to me, like, I've, I've heard a word one time. One time I heard a word. Every other time, I just get an idea, you know? And it's not, you know. What word was it? I was super miserable like four or five years, four years ago, five years ago. And I was just sitting there in misery. It was a while ago. I, I, yeah, I, I heard some good things about mushrooms and I, you know, it's one of my first times trying them. Small dose, nothing crazy. And I was laying in bed, I wasn't like seeing shit or anything, I was fully coherent, but it was having some effect, and... I was just thinking about my misery, and how like... I really wasn't enjoying life, you know? I was in this giant house, and I felt like I got everything on my checklist that I ever wanted in life. 
and uh, I was never less happy. And I tried to like, I, tr I tried to like look inward, like go deeper, but I tried just going deeper and deeper and deeper and taking it as, I was trying to like leave my head, sort of. I don't know how to describe it. I was like so discontent with where I was at. I was trying to like get out. I was like, I want out of the game. And I, I like knocked it. I tried going deeper and deeper. And at some point I like knocked on a door or something like that. I couldn't go further emotionally. And it felt like I was knocking on a door trying to get out. And just this one booming word, one booming voice, I heard, why? And I didn't have a good reason. I couldn't describe my misery, but it was spooky. And so I went away from the door. <laughs> I was like, all right, I should probably have a good reason if I'm gonna confront God. I should at least like know what I'm gonna say. It was a good fucking question. And I, you know, after that moment, I started asking why way more often and all sorts of things. I asked myself, why do I do the things I do? Any of the things. If I'm really being ruthlessly honest with myself, why? And I realized I had a pretty bad answer for just about everything I was spending my time on. It was egoic pursuits. I was chasing status, money, women. You know, it's, it was uh, weak reasons for weak actions and felt like a weak man. And so now, you know, and then I spent more time asking why. And not, you know, now I try to have good reasons for doing stuff. And that perspective of one actor, infinite characters, really helps with that. Because if I'm increasing net good, I think that's a good purpose. It's one that I have conviction in. But I don't know, it's so fun to like ruminate on this stuff, right? Cause I, I, I think about this like Millennium Kingdom idea sometimes, or like, like let's say there was a utopian earth already. Let's just imagine there was a utopian earth. You'd still have to educate people in that society, wouldn't you? And according to studies, the most effective teaching tool is a game. Because you learn a lot better experiencing something. Like a game is just an experience. You, you learn better experiencing something than being told it. The games are phenomenal teaching devices. That's how I learned how to think, was games. And uh, If I were running a utopian society and I had to build a school, wouldn't you just make it a VR game? You know, let people get the Minecraft griefing out of their system, the depravity. And then, and before you let them into civilized society, and I would design the game in such a way that there's only one way out, and you know for sure they're ready. Fire by baptism. Or baptism by fire, rather. What if you never make it out? See, that's the thing. I think everyone makes it out eventually. Some souls are just older. You know what I mean? You, If you don't make it out, you just respawn, right? You die, and then you go into the tunnel of your mom's vagina. And you run it back. There's some passage in the Bible that talked about, like, you know, in, in the real world, it's like, Two hours there is, or it, it was like an hour there is like a thousand years here or something like that. And I'm just like, man, that sounds like a VR game. This is like entirely a guess. I didn't see anything about that. I don't know. I don't know. But but I, if I had to educate people in a utopian society, I think I would do it with a game. Then then people could, could get this bestial shit out of their system without ruining the rest of civilized society. It's a lot easier to break something than to create it. You know, any dipshit can break something. It doesn't mean they're capable of building it. Anybody can kill a great man. It doesn't make the killer great. No, I Am I fake? Maybe. I, I, I think about how I would engineer this VR game. And you either make it an MMO where there's literally different souls interacting with each other, or you have a machine that like builds the game purely off of the, the players, like, like it's a single player game. Like, 
that's inherently balanced because when you're hurting someone, you're literally hurting yourself, kind of thing. Like I said, it's it's like a miniature version of like a VR game powered by your own mind, sort of. I mean, a dream, I guess. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe it's. Maybe. We're just spitballing, right? What do I know? You believe in reincarnation? Yeah. yeah. Are you happy? I'm happier than than I was in the last few years, for sure. I think happiness is a lack of desire. And I definitely have desires, so I'm not perfectly happy. Happiness is a lack of desire. And the ego is a source of desire. I'm working on that, but a yeah, big weakness for me. Yeah, it's a Buddhist idea, but there's a lot of there's a lot of truth in some of the Buddhist stuff. Like desires, suffering. It's a very old idea. Buddhism is like a pre-flood belief system too. Um, and yes, it's, it tracks with with some of the Christianity stuff. But yeah, I, I think I think Christianity is like, there's truth to be found everywhere. Truth is self-evident everywhere. You'll find some in Buddhism. You'll find some in everything. I I think. I think the Bible is like the most contemporary truth you can find as far as like religious belief systems. Hope you're doing well too, Conan. Thanks, man. Is karma truth? Yeah, there, there, is, there is some sort of like cosmic justice. I've been thinking a lot about the notion of justice. There's no justice to be had in human systems. Human justice is not justice. It's retribution. Retribution is not justice. Our whole court system pursues retribution, not justice. But there is some sort of cosmic justice. What goes around comes around kind of thing. And, uh... I think that was kind of the root of why the stuff with Jesus had to go down the way it did. Because the, the great sin was Adam's, right? It was one perfect life ruined through Adam's sin. And, and then that created problems for all of his offspring. And just like, just like one man's mistake fucked everything for everybody. One man's virtue unfucked it. One perfect life for one perfect life. Sort of. It's like a... God has some sense of karmic justice. I don't know exactly how it works. It's above my pay grade. But, but I'm sure you guys have seen it in practice. You know what I mean? It's, uh, sometimes it looks like the, the evil are prospering, but the more you dig into that, the more you realize not really, and not for long, ever. God was more offended by Adam's sin than Eve's. Yeah, you know what I think? He was offended. There's a lot to be offended by in that whole situation. You, 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 you're God. You tell the guy not to do the thing. He does the thing. Okay, that sucks. You made a mistake. But how did it actually go down? He shows up there. He goes to the snake or Lucifer or whatever. He's like, hey, oh, what gives? He's like, well, I didn't do it. Eve did it. He goes to Eve and she's like, well, I didn't do it. The snake told me to do it. He goes to Adam and he's like, well, I did it because Eve told me to do it. Nobody owned their shit. Nobody took accountability. And now we have to learn this multi-generational lesson through suffering through mortality and increasingly shorter lifespans. And it's miserable. I want my telepathy back. Time ruins all things here. 
God is a great game designer, and I think time is just shit game design. Wherever we're going after this is timeless. But maybe you need time for causality. I don't know, it is causal. Like A leads to B, there is continuity in events. Maybe you need time for causality. Yeah, I don't know. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? I mean, I'm reading the 66 manuscripts that most denominations, I think, use the same manuscripts. So it's both. Yeah, it's both Testaments. As someone who's not religious, even I have to admit that there are real historical accounts in the Bible, whether or not the overarching religious themes are true or false yeah it's it, it, it definitely the 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 because because the the flood story is the same in all cultures it's not just like a biblical thing right there, there there was a society before the flood atlantis let's say another another nation state too that they warred with but look atlantean times let's call them and as usual we start doing shit we're not supposed to do that just makes the game less fun for everybody. Biological engineering, sorcery, and we turn everything into a chimeric hellscape until God just has to drown everybody. And now we're gonna run it back. He promised no more drowning though. The Bible opens on that, so that's good news. Maybe he'll send a rock this time. He's not going to send a rock. He'll send Jesus. Raynad, do you ever think about that one time Knife Juggler went face? The one time? Is there a time it hasn't? Do you think it's possible to break the game through science? No. Because the agent doing it is God. He's not, like, there's no other intelligence. There's one intelligence in the universe. And so, no, he's not going to destroy himself. <laughs> Do you still eat meat after realizing we're all one? Dude, that, that's one I was really conflicted on. Like, I used to love fishing, and now I feel really guilty doing it, because I think, like, I am the fish, <laughs> you know? I don't want to do that to myself. But, um, with meat, like, I, I do eat meat. I, um... The Bible says it's cool. It says we're allowed to eat anything as long as we cook it. Don't eat it while it still has blood in it. Um... So, you know, if, if, if that's your source of truth, it's it's all good. Um, yeah, for me, it's just uh, animals taste good. I don't know. But yeah, I, th I think where we're going, it's probably all vegetarian. Because I, I can't imagine. Yeah, it, it's got to be all vegetarian. Is it okay to eat rare cooked meat? The Bible just says as long as there's no blood in it. So you cook it enough that there's no blood. I, I don't know if rare meat is blood. I, I've always liked my steak. Uh, medium well, well, well done. Like, you know. I cooked the steak this morning for breakfast. It was amazing. I finally grilled it right. I'm not that good at grilling. No food where we're going, to be honest. So, I, I, you know, I, I've thought about that, but I, 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 I think there is food. Because I, I, you, don't, you don't necessarily need to architect us with a stomach or desires or any of that shit, right? But 
the whole point of this thing is to have a good experience. Otherwise, you would just not play all the characters. You would, you would just stay as a singularity. And, and so, like, I, I think, I think hunger is, does make the experience better in a sense. Is by desiring food and satiating that desire. That's like a a fun experience. Food tastes good. Yeah. Is it like? It depends what you're optimizing for. You know, like I. I I think God optimizes for net fun because he has to play everyone's life. And so I think it's probably more fun if you can eat delicious things. And if you're eating yourself, it's you know, it's not fun to be on the cow end of that. Like he has to be though. So I do think the more enlightened we get, the more vegetarian it becomes probably. But yeah, I don't know, I eat meat. Is eating ass allowed? Only if it's your wife. Is evolution real? Um, yes and no. On a macro scale, absolutely, like natural selection changes organisms on a really long time scale. Um, but the way that we're taught evolution, like like we got here through evolution, that's all provably horseshit. The DNA record proves it. There's actually never been a missing link found. Uh, we just show up 45,000 years ago. Cro-Magnon, which is what we are, just shows up suddenly. In, in the fossil record, in the genetic record, is just not there, and then it's there. And uh, so the, the picture we see of increasingly upright monkeys that are walking, that's bullshit. We did not all come, you know, out of Africa and evolve and thought, it's not, it was like Cro-Magnon just showed up, uh, and then most of us died in the flood. And then around Mount Ararat and from the Arctic Circle, civilization basically repopulated. And, and so, yeah, basically everyone is just Cro-Magnon. Everyone's the same animal um, with like a small hominid splash. So like if you're European, you're like 3% Neanderthal. Um, if you're... Um, if you're Asian, it's like it's like a couple percent, like a different hominid. If 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 you're African, it's a I forgot what they call it. It's like a like a ghost hominid or ghost species. I think you you have a different admixture basically. Like everyone has a slightly different splash, which is why we look different a little. But we're all just Cro-Magnon, so it's not. And like I said, Cro-Magnon just shows up suddenly. That's what that's not me saying it. That's what the DNA record says, uh, according to. Any reputable anthropologist, so. We share 99% DNA with chimps, lol. People that say that don't know how DNA works. We share 99% DNA with a banana, my, my guy. It's, what matters is how the Lego pieces are arranged. Well, which ones there are. I didn't deny evolution. Natural selection does exist. But yeah, the whole Darwinian theory is, you know, <laughs> the latest in a long line of the scams trying to give people a reason to disbelieve God, you know, to, to, to steer you away from him. Look at the DNA record. We just show up. Why can't I disbelieve God? Brother, you're free to, to do what you want. It's a free will universe. That's the beauty of it. 
God has allowed for parts of himself to not believe in himself. Parts of him have outright contempt for him, like Lucifer. What do you do with the part of yourself that refuses to be integrated? I ask myself that a lot. Kiss it is a good answer, yeah. Put it to work, separating the wheat from the chaff, I guess is God's answer. I don't know. Why does God allow for sin to exist and then ask others not to sin? God allows for free will. It's a free will universe. He wants to maximize your optionality to give you the widest range of choices. And that includes doing bad things that don't serve you. Once you have the power of choice, you have the responsibility for those choices. Some choices serve you, some don't. Sin never serves you or anyone else. Like, yeah, if, if you have free will, you need to have the option to do the wrong thing. And it's, you know, I don't, I don't look at, we look at it as like this bad thing and wouldn't it be better if we didn't do it? But I, it's hard to imagine, but like imagine a universe and you have, you know, trillions of planets, different species, different states of technology and spirituality. It's, it's. You know, sometimes there's a caterpillar, sometimes there's a butterfly. Is a butterfly really better than a caterpillar? Or is it just, are they, are they both equally necessary parts of the same butterfly process? I think he thinks of things more that way. And so, you know, I, I think our state of sin and unenlightenment is like a necessary part of the process to, to, on the journey to... Yeah, you know, and maybe maybe we just keep going all the way up, and then it gets all Star Trekky and utopian, and then and then we just descend again because we're bored. I don't know. That's what the fallen angels did, apparently, right? Satan gave us free will, not God. God gave us free will. That's what gave us the choice to accept the fruit of knowledge. Remember, Adam and Eve made a choice to eat the apple. Free will. Before Lucifer. And because we made a bad choice and didn't take accountability for it, we are now suffering through a millennia long educational process. Learning the harsh lesson of accountability and humility and courage and spiritual fortitude. It's not a great game. It's just tolerable enough to learn from. That's what makes it so satisfying on the other side of it, I think, you know? You go from this to utopia, from this to timelessness. Is Google evil? Yes. Bro, I think my computer's getting high from the stream. <laughs> Good. I oh, mean, I haven't heard Chaos in a while. That's a, that's a name. Vinny, that's not true. Stop lying about things you have. I'd encourage you to read it instead of parroting something you read on Twitter. Do you believe there are other civilizations out there? Dude, okay, this is going to sound ridiculous. I Well, not ridiculous, but... I, yeah, my, my whole life... I was very, very convinced... about space, and UFOs, and aliens, and all of it. My whole life. I, I don't think the Bible even necessarily contradicts it. Uh, even, even if that were my sole source of truth on the universe, right? 
But I, th- I think about how do I know that? Like, why do I have such conviction in space being a thing? And I realize I'm taking the word of a priest, right? Or like a NASA priest from a church that has reliably, provably lied so many times and so often. And so, like, yeah, if I had to put my money on it, 80-20, I'd say, for sure. For sure, there's other civilizations, and it, 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 w- it would make a lot of sense. But I also have to acknowledge, I've never been there. I don't know anyone that's been there. And I am just taking the word of a propagandist at face value. And it's been pretty eye-opening how many things have been untrue that I thought were true. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Well, like I said, I, I think it is real. I think I would have to make more assumptions to say there is no space. But I think you also have to acknowledge you're just taking some guy's word for it. You don't fucking know. You've never been there, and you don't know anyone that's been there. So, take that for what it, what it is, you know? I didn't say the Vatican is the beacon of truth. I never said the Vatican is an evil, evil organization. I didn't say shit about the Vatican. You're you're the one equating the Bible to the Vatican, brother. You gotta separate that link. Very few things is, you know, less Christian than the Vatican. in a geocentric universe? I don't know. Astronomy is this arcane thing that I'm too disinterested and too lazy to, to study. Uh, astronomy. Or, yeah, and, and the... Um, but if I just look outside day to day, it, it looks like the stars move, but the Earth doesn't, I guess. But I could see... It. The conventional viewpoint also explains that well, right? So, I don't know. Probably not. Like, if I had to guess, like, we, we are floating in space, and there are billions of planets, and, yeah. There's also parts of the Bible that I think line up with that. I think it talks about the Earth being, like, suspended and nothingness or something. I forgot, like, the maybe one of you guys knows the verse. I don't know. It also talks about, like, a firmament, but I don't know what that is. Maybe that's it's just a word for an atmosphere. Yeah. Have you read religious books outside? Yeah, yeah, I, I did a bunch of the, the ones outside of Christianity first. Yeah, I, yeah. Old Sumerian texts, Epic of Gilgamesh, a bunch of Gnostic stuff, like Book of Thomas, Book of Enoch. I read a bunch of, uh, like, a little bit of the Quran, uh, Kabbalah. It's, uh... No, 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 they're not all true, my friend. <laughs> they're definitely not all true. They, they have some... A lot of them have, you know, ten truths to sell one lie kind of thing. I'm a big Muhammad fan, I guess, as a fellow redhead. I've heard good things. I have read the Talmud, and I'm telling you, brother, don't go down that road. Obviously not following it, but I mean, like, don't, don't get mad at it. Don't vilify the people that follow that. That's a road to victimhood. That's a tempting, easy road. You are responsible for your problems. Not 
not anyone else's religion. Why don't you start taking Christianity seriously? A couple months ago. I don't, I'm, I'm a student of it. I'm not like, you know, I. It's the best I got right now, but I've been wrong before. So I'm just, I'm, I'm reading it right now. That's it. I realized it would be so irresponsible. Actually, hold on. I just had to plug this in. I realized it would be so irresponsible to just, uh, irresponsible to dismiss it without having read the book. So that, that's where I'm at. I'm just trying to read the book. It's just interesting. We'll see where it lands. It starts pretty dry. Genesis is just like, this guy did this thing, this guy did this thing. Because it used to be a record-keeping method. That's how you kept track of like who lived. <laughs> mm. If everyone is a manifestation of God, why do you get mad at Twitch chat? Because I have a hard time remembering that day to day. Super easy to get mad. It's hard to like look your enemy in the eye and remember the face of God, you know? That's 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 what's so that's why Jesus is such a strong man. It's you know, one day I'll work up to that. I try every day. But it's fucking hard hardest thing to do is to remember that. It's just you you're dealing with. I'm just going to start banning stupid bullshit. Now I'm separating the wheat from the chaff with my mighty ban hammer. Let's prune this chat room into a wonderful garden of Eden. I started doubting evolution just when I was, I got into anthropology a couple of years ago, long before I read the Bible, um, long before I read the Bible. I, um, there's a Luciferian, <laughs> a guy called Robert Sepper that uh, goes into some esoteric stuff on YouTube, has some digestible videos, but yeah, he's not wrong about the DNA stuff, but um, yeah, where he's trying to steer people towards is... Uh, Gnosticism. That's not a place you want to go. It won't serve you. Doo -doo. Boop. I, n I never bench yet, God. Sorry, man. Life's been good, Marwan. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting the past few years. It's, it's nice to focus on you know like one creative endeavor. Um, it's fun to make a game. I'm happy you know, we're making a good one. Like I, I think this will be. I want to say I'm proud of it, but I'm trying not to feel pride on anything. You know, it's not good for you. But <laughs> but I, I you know I'm I, I think we have an incredible team. I think think they're all putting their heart. All of us are putting our heart into this project. I think it'll make some kids happy, you know. Hopefully, it can feed us for a bit, but, you know, cautiously optimistic. I think it'll be a, a game a lot of you like.
Gnosticism was never a splinter of Christianity. That's what Gnostics tried to claim to make the Gnosticism pill more platable. Gnosticism is the first conspiracy theory. It frames the universe as a prison architected by a nefarious demiurge, a nefarious god who has imprisoned us in this reality. It's, it's Lucifer's religion. It's, uh... See, by, by, framing, by framing reality as a prison, he, and I'm sorry to keep repeating this, I know some of you guys have been on the stream the whole time, but yeah, by framing reality as a prison, by framing the Garden of Eden as a prison, Lucifer is the one liberating us from it. It's, it's a philosophy of victimhood. All my problems are God's fault, not my own, not my own mistakes. A cheap way of dodging accountability for your choices. Anytime you go down conspiratorial rabbit holes and you, you find yourself feeling like a victim of the state or a victim of whatever, that's the danger of that. You gotta own your shit, you know? The thing is, you weren't there with Adam and Eve. Why suffer for their sin as well? Well, I'm their offspring. I don't think we're suffering for suffering's sake. We're not suffering as punishment for their mistake. That's retribution. That's not justice. God has justice. It's different. This is a school. Adam and Eve gained the ability to make choices they couldn't make before as a result of the gift of knowledge. But they didn't take accountability for the choices they made. God went to them after they ate the fruit. He said, Ayo, what up? Uh, they all said, I didn't do it. Uh, you know, they, they made me do it. Nobody took accountability for their shit. Uh, it's like we, uh, it's like they gave something more dangerous than nuclear launch codes to gorillas, you know? We weren't spiritually ready for it. Knowledge is a level 100 Charizard that we didn't have enough spiritual gym badges to tame. And so we go through this experience to learn some of these lessons. The idea that aliens are keeping us here to feed off our soul and that going into the light. Yes, yes, yes. Anytime you hear the word matrix, red pill, um, ascension, any of this new age shit, any of this Alex Jones shit, any of this conspiratorial shit, it's all steering you towards Gnosticism. It's teeing you up trying to engender worship for Lucifer. Because once you see yourself as a victim, you'll see the world his way. You'll see yourself as a victim of God, like he does. And isn't that tempting? All my problems are someone else's fault. Mm. Alex Jones is a prime example of Luciferian propaganda. And it's subtle, and it's fucking smart. He's, fix he's fixated on worldly things, worldly issues. It's the opposite of what the Bible preaches. It's the opposite of what Christ preached. False shepherd, exactly. Anytime you hear the word matrix, any of this shit, that's what that's steering you towards. And it's very organized. And you can look at it. The New Age is in lockstep with the conspiratorial movement. In lockstep, in talking points in propaganda, in algorithmic feeding to you. It, 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 you get into one, you get into the other. It, it's, it's fucked, it's um, orchestrated. And the only thing that's, that, that's, the only thing Lucifer's waiting on is the Third World War, basically. And tribulation is what the Bible calls it. Yeah, 
Gnostic. Gnosticism is not Satanism, it's Luciferianism. But yeah, it's, yeah. Gnosticism is Lucifer's perspective. Like, like, like the Garden of Eden story is like the biblical version of that. It's like Christ's perspective, right? Paradise that we ruin through our mistake. But then the story of Prometheus is Lucifer's perspective on the Garden of Eden story. The story of Prometheus is like Greek mythology. Prometheus stole the flame from God and gifted it to man. He, he, he liberated man from God's prison with the gift of knowledge. That's Gnosticism. The only difference, the crux of the difference, is your relationship with accountability. Are you responsible for your misery? Or are you a victim of God, of the state, of other people's religion? Do you embrace victimhood or accountability? So, is everyone responsible for other people's motivations, goals, and actions then? If one can never be a... Dude, I don't understand your question. What are you talking about? Everyone's responsible for themselves, is what I'm saying. I know you're allergic to that idea. Most of us are. I've been getting into Neoplatonism, Gnosticism, and Kabbalah. It all comes from Pythagorean philosophy and the algorithm. It's all horseshit, my, my guy. It's all horseshit. I went deep into that shit long before the Bible. Trust me. It's all horseshit. Yeah, you know, when small men want to feel bigger than other men, when they want to feel less small, one way that they try to do that is information asymmetry. I know something you don't know, right? So you get these Kabbalistic, like, uh, oral traditions. You get, like, uh, little little clubs that no, that no one else is in that try to monopolize information. Uh it's it doesn't lead to anything good man it's it's all of those belief systems abdicate responsibility you want to own you want to hold yourself responsible for your choices don't blame problems on other people you know if you lose at a card game do you ask yourself what you could have done better or do you blame luck I've been on both sides of that all the time. You guys have seen it. One mindset makes me climb the leaderboard forever. One mindset makes me just keep losing. Don't blame luck. It doesn't get you anywhere. Don't blame God. Don't blame any of it. Forsen's Luciferian. We're all Luciferian. That's the point, man. We're all tempted to adopt that weak mindset because it's easier than holding ourselves responsible. It's much harder to say that I am solely responsible for my own misery. My actions led to this. I am solely at fault for my relationships not going how they want, either through my actions or my expectations. Own your shit. Have you heard of the Aramanic? No, you mean Aramaic? I mean, I know like Hebrew Aramaic scriptures. I don't know what Aramanic is. I'm not responsible for the society. Yeah, don't focus on the society, man. It's 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 fucked. It's meant to be fucked. It's always been fucked. It'll get fixed soon. It's a very happy ending to this story. It's all good. 
man who blames no one has already arrived. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah, that blaming no one is, is the play. You gotta forgive yourself. But you, you do have to, like, acknowledge that you were responsible for the bad thing that happened in your life. Because only once you acknowledge that can you accept that you made a mistake. And only once you've accepted that you've made a mistake can you stop repeating it. If, if you blame luck in the card game for losing a card game, you never looked into what play you could have made better. And so you don't improve. And so you just repeat the mistake that made you lose, you know? You can definitely win with a bad hand. But you gotta, like, optimize for your play. Not your excuses. Well, I didn't ask to be dealt the cards I was dealt. Oh. I empathize, man. I felt that. It's so hard not... It's hard not to feel like a victim. Because we can all think of a time where we've been victimized. But if I'm really being honest with myself, I always had agency. There always was another line of play that would have turned out better for me. I'm not just a victim of the person who hurt me, you know? Have you read the story of Job in the Bible? Uh, I've heard the story of Job. Uh, I have not personally uh, read that yet. Um, well, I've, I've read uh, of Job uh, in the Bible in the beginning he's mentioned, but he's not, uh, I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, yeah, Job basically, Job had everything he ever wanted. You know, family, riches, he loved God. And, you know, Satan goes to God and he's like, ah, this guy only likes you because you give him stuff, you know? And God is like, oh, really? And so God takes all his stuff away. Kills all his family, takes all his shit. And uh, the whole time, Job just gets more conviction in God. He knows that he's being tested. He sees it as a tribulation. He doesn't blame God for it. He just loves him more. And then I think God gives him all his stuff back. The, 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 the moral of the story is uh, Job has kind of the wisest perspective when you're faced with horrible things happening to you. See it as a test from God, something to grow from, learn from, overcome. You know, God will never give a man more than he can bear. Yeah, spoilers, my bad. I, I'm, I haven't gotten to that part. I'm, I'm, it's a game of telephone. I'm telling you the Job story. Somebody correct me, please, if I'm wrong on the, the plot there. Miss you too, Shed TV. Hope you're doing good, man. To what end? Well, if you do believe you reincarnate, then there's like different levels of maturity for your soul, right? You start as a whatever bacterium, you go up to insect, eventually you're a mammal. At no point do you really have agency. You're mostly a reactive beast learning how to like... You keep reincarnating, at some point you're human. A sinful pile of flesh that refuses to hold itself accountable. And then, yeah, wherever we're going is the next step, you know, a little more Star Trek y, a little more telepathic, who knows. But, uh, that's the point of those experiences. The point of growing is, you know, it's, it's the caterpillar butterfly thing. You know, a butterfly isn't better than a caterpillar, it's, just a different part. Like, they're both parts of the same butterfly process, the caterpillar and the butterfly. Both equally necessary. Because you, if you're God, you could have just, you could have just made it so like we are made perfect and flawless and it, I don't know. I think something about the process is more entertaining than just getting to the finish line. Maybe he made problems so that we can have the satisfaction of fixing them.
I also think, I also think, uh, you know, I pay attention to God's creative process a lot because it comes up in game design a lot. Like anytime I'm stuck on stuff, I look at how like nature is designed and it's always smarter than whatever I'm doing every time. And uh, God's creative process is different from ours, I've noticed. Like a lot of times when humans make stuff, we do it brick by brick, like masonry, like building a house, brick by brick. Very manual, very prescriptive in what you make. God's process is more like agriculture, I think. And if you plant a bunch of seeds and then you reap, you, know, you, you pick the ripe fruit. I think it's more efficient. I think it creates more novelty. I think it's more fun, lower effort, more output. You could probably just make more of yourself that way. What do you think of Stoicism? Yeah, there's some good lessons in there. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think any of it could be a decent starting point. You know, it's it's good. It's good that you're thinking about how you think in general. Uh, it's a step most people don't take it to. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I haven't. I haven't read too much of the Marcus Aurelius stuff or anything. My, my friend told me I should read a page every day, kind of thing. There's some there's some of his lessons I, I like. You know, he talks about like not lying to yourself. That's a big thing for me. That that was a a lesson you really got to learn in, in competitive card games if you're trying to make it to the top because that's like the the biggest hurdle the whole way through. Even when you're good, you're lying to yourself about how good you are. And, but, yeah, that's a that's the thing about victimhood. It's it's an easy way to lie to yourself, I think. And so stoicism preaches against that. You know. I think it's, that's good advice. I haven't read much outside of that, though, about it. Cubans Will Rise says, This shit is so gay. Enjoy living a mentally ill life, comparing God, actually just emergent life, to game design law. God bless you, brother. I should adopt your belief system, and I'll sound just as wise as you do, just as happy as you are. Destiny viewer, I, I got, I gotta stop the yeah, I gotta keep other people's names out of my mouth. Don't the, you, you too, man. Don't don't make fun of Destiny viewers. Destiny's doing us a service. All right, he's. Just like Lucifer, he's separating the wheat from the chaff. Thank God he's a magnet for those viewers, you know? Or else more of them would be here. What about people that get assaulted as a child? Yeah, man, that's, see, that's, so I know some friends that have had an experience like that. And it's so tragic, right? You're, you're, you're powerless, you had no agency or little agency at that time. You couldn't stop this bad thing from happening to you, this horrible thing. And so what do you do when you're, when you're a victim of something like that? Well, I know some folks that have continued to claim victimhood well into their adulthood because of the bad thing that happened to them. Oh, well this terrible, inexcusable thing happened to me. And so, anything wrong that I do is just because that thing happened to me. I'm not accountable for my mistakes. Right? It, it's, I get, it's like a question of how you deal with it, right? Sometimes I get an unwinnable draw in a card game, or just like really fucking unlucky. But you can still do your best to play optimally from that situation, right? Or you can... You know, it's tragic that it happens. It, it, it's you know, a huge problem in the world today. And people don't understand the scale that it's happening at either. That'll be a big eye-opener for a bunch of folks. And, um, yeah, it's sad. It's one of the reasons there'll be this organic rise against that machination. Mm. 
What if you get murdered? Usually there's decisions you made that lead up to that. Yeah, you could say it's God's challenge too, yeah. When something like that happens to you as a child, it's, um, yeah. But I, I, w I would never compare this to like, you know, being molested or whatever. That, that's, that's a horrible thing to go through. It's entirely different. But like, I, I, feel, I felt like a victim as a child, you know. I, I was six years old and I moved to America. I left my loving family in Ukraine and I moved in with just a stepdad and my mom in America. My mom married an American. And this man did not treat me well. My whole life, it felt very, very abusive. And I'm not proud of how I handled it because I saw myself as a victim of it. And I, I fostered contempt in my heart for him. And we had a very antagonistic relationship the whole way through. And as I got older, it just got worse. And, you know, I never reconciled. I hope one day I do. But, you know, I, I could have given him a hug and called him dad, even though he was being a dick to me. And I wonder if he still would have been a dick. I'd say, I, 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 I don't like... And, and see, that, that carried over into so many... That was such a formative experience for me. It, it carried over into a lot of how I saw the world. Like... You know, in Magic, I got that suspension, and I felt victimized by Dad again. And, uh, because part of what, what instigated that was my tweet. But the... And, and so, so I had this antagonistic relationship with Wizard. And then on Twitch, I had this antagonistic relationship with Twitch. And then with Blizzard, again, I had this antagonistic relationship with Blizzard. Um, like, I, I I was in the Hearthstone house, and, you know, Dad wasn't inviting me to tournaments early, and, <laughs> yeah, and so, no, I don't have to reconcile. I choose to reconcile. Love thine enemy. None of it led to anything good, you know? Like, I, I could have made a smaller game a lot faster. But I had this fucking stepdad uh, victim mentality with Blizzard, right? And it's like, oh, well, it's just, I wanted to deal with it the same way I dealt with the stepdad. Oh, like, fuck you. I'll just be more successful than you. And, you know, I had these fucking pathological, like, oh, let's make a bigger game than Hearthstone. Fucking first game ever. Brand new studio. Whatever, you know, I just, I, just, I put myself into a fucking five-year ordeal. Yeah, I, I could have, you know, I, I could have focused more on family in this time, had more humble goals, not antagonize Blizzard. It didn't serve me, right? Like, like being on this side of it, like you, you put so much time and effort and love into a project for so many years, and then, uh, you know, it, your most popular streamer just shit talks your game all day. Like, I don't know, that would suck to hear. I know it's gonna happen to me. I deserve it. <laughs> That's all right. I'll nerf things. Do you ever question the source of your religious material? Yeah, that's what I started with. Because I was so mad about the... Because I realized that algorithms led me from banking stuff to conspiracy stuff to Gnosticism. It all leads to Gnosticism. All of it. New Age shit leads to Gnosticism. And I realized I'd been, like, algorithmically duped. And it was... And I had that victim mentality again, like in all other things. That's why it was that's such a tempting belief system for me. And I was so mad... Once I saw it, like that I was steered towards it. And I didn't want to get tricked again. Like I really, it's so embarrassing for me to get tricked, you know? Like I pride myself on like making the hero call in poker, like reading them. And I got tricked. And uh, and so, when, yeah, I, I, I went to a church for the first time, like in 20 years or whatever. First time of my own volition. Just to pick up a Bible, I was curious. Like, I wanted to read the thing. And the first thing I did is criticize. Like, I was like, okay, how do you know these 
this is real has been retranslated a trillion times by so many guys and it's just, there's so many denominations how do i know that yours is is the one that's not bullshit and all you know and all yeah basically there's a good answer uh depending on the kind of answer you're looking for like The translations are pretty reliable because we have copies of the, in multiple languages of these old manuscripts throughout time. And the translations have been pretty consistent. Sometimes they, they tweak a word here and there, uh, but, but mostly it's because language changes over time and sort of gets retranslated periodically. Um, but they all pretty much say the same thing. Like the thesis is consistent. The, the, the meaning isn't changed between different like Bible versions. Um, And then, uh, and then, you know, historically you learn about the process of how these were passed down. And you had a bunch of these monks and like, like the, the, the literate echelon of society would basically just write this fucking book and rewrite it and rewrite it. Hundreds of copies, thousands of copies in a lifetime. And so, I mean, it's literally the most reproduced text in human history. So it's, it's, it, what I fall on is... How many assumptions do I have to make? The, the, the more that I learned about the history of it and how we got here, and I, I would have to make more assumptions to, to claim some conspiracy about it being wrong and bullshit. And it, now, that's not to say that there weren't like denominations that tried to steer people the wrong way, or you know, you know I, I'm not the biggest Vatican fan by any means. Um, but you kind of have to, you know, separate the organizations, the companies from the message. Uh, m most importantly, I just got old, and I was just thinking philosophically about stuff a bunch, and I, I came to some conclusions. Like I, I don't, I don't know that much. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty dumb overall, but I, I came to some. There's some things that I just had great conviction in that I knew were true, and uh, like you know, blaming luck doesn't serve you in a card game kind of stuff, and uh, the Bible tracked with it. Like it's just good advice. I think people get hung up on like whether it's true or not and they have this like binary true false view of it and I think that's kind of like not a smart way to look at anything. It's I don't know that it matters whether it's true or false. Even if even if you go into it thinking it's purely fiction, you can still learn a lot from fiction. It's a pathology that serves you. Um, but yeah, the, the, the more I saw how the world is organized, the more the Bible's story explained it better than anything else I could find, so. And it's a happy ending. I did find Jesus. Feels good, man. I disagree with that, Derpful Gaming. I disagree with you completely. I think it is truth. But, to each their own. Like, 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 like what, what I realized is, you know, these people that don't believe in the Bible, their conviction is so misplaced. Like, like, you can say, I don't know, but to say with 100% certainty that it's bullshit when, A, you've never read it, you don't even know what you're disagreeing with, B, your reasons are stupid and self-contradictory often, not being, uh, not to be accusatory, but like, I'm, I'm more convinced by the... <laughs> the message in the Bible that I am by, by some guy's dismissal of it, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, th I think people get hung up on true or false. But I think a lot of times it doesn't matter whether it's true or false. And then... Also, there's always this fourfold symmetry in all things, not twofold. People think it's either true or false, black or white, but it's not actually how any of this is engineered. There's fourfold symmetry in all things. Things can be true or false, or both true and false, or neither true nor false. And people always forget about the last two options, but that's half of them. That's half of the time it's one of those two. And so, yeah.
it true that you're starring in season five of True Detective? Oh man, I hope so. Is that show good? I've only watched the first season. It's a good one though. Made me feel like Woody Harrelson's a, just a dirty old man who produced that. <laughs> Season three is good. Only season one, rest are shit. All right. Still hiring for the bazaar? Yeah, you can go on tempogames.com to see positions that we have listed. We're always recruiting on LinkedIn, but yeah, usually it's a "we'll come to you" thing. Um, Cause we we hire for like really senior, really specialized roles. You know, it's not it's not like entry level design stuff. It's Q QA is our pipeline into design. So if we have like a, a quality assurance position open, that'd be a we've hired some some great junior folks through that. Um, but yeah, Bizarre's coming this year, yeah. Yeah, you guys will be able to play it soon. And you'll be seeing a lot more of me, because I'll have to promote it. Do you think language is a barrier or problem for thinking about some of these ideas and concepts? No, it, it's not the most efficient way of communicating. Like, I wish I could just send ideas, but um, language is... A tool. It depends on how good the user is. Hey, what's up, Trump? Maybe you'll see more of me when I promote the Bizarre Two Pog. Yeah, dude. Let let me uh, let me get you in on the next demo. You can play uh, first week of May if you want to try it out. I'd love your feedback. Um, it it still doesn't have like all the systems in, but um, yeah, I'd lo I'd love your take on where it's at. Good to hear from you, Jeffrey. I hope you're well, man. You still in Texas? You're about to be reelected, my friend. No, I'm absolutely not voting for Trump. It's all, it's all, any politician you've ever heard of is a Luciferian stooge. I'm not having any of it. But I do think we're headed to World War III. And also, your vote hasn't counted in a century. It's, <laughs> America hasn't been a sovereign country since, like, the Civil War. Or, like, Woodrow Wilson, at least. Like, it's, don't worry about it. It's out of our hands, my friend. Focus on your household, yourself, your heart. That's where the fight is. Love thy neighbor. America is founded by Freemasons, yeah. But uh, yeah, Statue of Liberty is... Uh, that is Lucifer. It's, uh, it's, it's Prometheus, right? The bearing the light of God. It's, Columbia logo, same symbolism. No, it's not a joke. That's, that's the symbolism. Raynad, I tuned in to feel good reminiscing. Now you're telling me my children are dead. Brother, I'm telling you your children are immortal, and so are you. That's the beauty of the story. Your worst case scenario, you just go again. You just you just you just play again. Learn a little more in another lifetime. Best case scenario. You find God in this lifetime. And we enjoy Utopia pretty soon. That's my hope. Yeah, I looked into the near-death experience stuff, yeah. 
Can you please play Hearthstone again? Only when Raren makes me at gunpoint. He's a very intimidating man. Yeah, Jordan Peterson's a propagandist too. It's a little tragic. Would you ever do DMT? Conflicted on that one. I, look, I, I don't think drugs have any. Don't they don't serve you? There's nothing that any drug has to offer you. They're all a net negative. Uh, that being said, mushrooms, which is something people classify as a drug in their head sometimes, but it's food. It's a mushroom. That that's one that that I do think everyone stands to gain from. Like it always spits you out a little better than you went in. Um, and all, all the all the horror stories or old wives tales, but uh, nah, DMT. I don't, I don't know any any of that hyper concentrated chemical shit that's found in dosages, n never present in nature. Yeah, I don't know. Like LSD, I would never recommend to anyone. But a bunch of people say it's the same as mushrooms. It's not. It's, mushrooms are neurogenerative. Like you, you gain. Like, you, you grow neurons and keep 40% of them permanently after the trip. All the other drugs just sort of burn the candle at both ends. So I've heard. DMT is everywhere in nature, but not in that concentration. You could say the same thing about LSD being in bacteria, but not in that concentration. Like, that's why you trip balls. Hey man, I've been following you for nearly a decade and it's been super enriching seeing your development. I'm proud of you, brother. Hey, thank you, Bad Company. Trying my best. You need a girlfriend to convince you to shave that beard. Yeah, I don't know, man. I might be celibate. I don't know. I'm, I've been thinking a lot about uh, 1 Corinthians verse 7 lately. Like Paul, or is it Paul? Someone's talking about the spiritual merits of getting married. And he basically says, I, I wish that everyone, all of you were like I am. He was celibate. Um, but he said, you know, where we're going, everyone's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, this is not how the Bible writes it, but he's like, where we're going, everyone's going to want to fuck. And it's better to be married if you're going to do that than to be, you know, a slave to... Than to burn with passion, I think is the phrase that it uses. It's better to marry than to, you know. But he, he said, either way, you're not sinning. Um, so either way is good, apparently. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm a single guy. I'm 32. I'm, I would like to have kids, but you know, I'm very conflicted about that right now. Uh, 1 Corinthians verse 7. I think it's 7, yeah. Raynette, are you still tall as fuck? No, I've shrank. Is abortion okay? I look, like, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, what I would say is, if you're ever curious, is something okay? Just ask your gut. You know, if you're conflicted at all. There's probably a reason for that to begin with, right? So, even if I can't, like, explain why it's not good, if, if, if I'm conflicted to begin with, it's usually not a good sign, is what I'd say. That's kind of my heuristic that I use. The same-sex relationship frowned upon? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have gay friends. I have straight friends. I... I think a lot about systems design because that's what game design is. You're trying to make a fun system. I've noticed certain things in the universe 
are a system that like self replicates. It, it propagates more of itself. Like, love is a good example. Love creates more love. But bad things also self propagate. Hate breeds more hate. And some things don't self propagate. They sort of reach their own natural conclusion. So yeah, I mean, I try not it's not to judge. I personally don't have a like opinion of that, like homosexuality being good or bad. I don't teach their own. I don't judge. Um, it it is a system that doesn't like self reproduce. I don't know if that matters. Like both systems exist in the universe. It's, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious too. It's a good question. But no, I, I haven't read anything in the Bible so far. It's like explicit about that. But I'm I'm not through it all the way. You know, I don't know. I'm not the expert. <laughs> The entire universe is moving towards entropy. That's not true. That's not true at all. The universe is a, a perfect balance of entropy and counter entropy. You can't have all of one or everything's formless. If it's all counter entropy, it's just a singularity. There's every, everything's formless. If it's all entropy, it's like a plasma cloud. Every, everything's formless. You need both. Most of the universe is two opposites meeting in the middle, and life exists at the margin. Entropy and counter-entropy are definitely that way. Entropy is a really interesting subject. I've been thinking about that a lot in systems design. What's so interesting to me, the way this whole thing is engineered, is like, all you need is counter-entropy for God to flourish. Like, if you have a log floating in a still pond, algae will grow on it. But if the water is turbulent, nothing will grow. You're sounding like that guy from Donnie Darko. Donnie is a smart man. He helped pull me out of some of that Gnosticism horse shit. He's right. He's right about the trajectory of the church. His arguments are well-reasoned. He's articulate. I'm not going to, like, blanket vouch for the guy. I don't know him, but... uh. He's worth a read. Donnie Darko. Man. It's a it's a Twitter guy. He's not a not 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 Trump. I mean the he's more of a guy warning against Trump, but he's he's more warning against the the trajectory of where things are going. How do you know you you've been infiltrated by Gnosticism? Well, if you're using phrases like red pill, matrix, prison, if you've gone down conspiratorial rabbit holes, if you feel like you're a victim of the state or other people or the banking system, then you're, that's a Gnostic worldview. It's a philosophy of victimhood. You blame God for your situation instead of yourself. Fuck, I'm in a matrix mode? Dude, me too. I was there a few months ago. No shame in it. It's not... Yeah, it's... And the whole world is going to increasingly trend that direction. Now that you see it, you can look into the other side. See what rings more true. And my issue with Gnosticism is that it's the philosophy of the bad card player. You're blaming luck for your situation instead of asking how you could have played better. Christ asks how he could have played better. Tells us to stop misplaying, stop sinning. What's your ideal shroom dose, Rayad? Like, I mean, like, I, you know, I was just first couple of times I tried it, it was like with friends, you know, they suggested it, it'd be on some holiday. And I, like for me, I, I'll tell you what my ritual is, but it's, it's like, you know, one, one day a week, maybe once every other week, I'll take like a Sunday. 
and I'll dedicate one day to just like thinking, just like meditation. And I'll take like two grams at the start of that. Um, and that's it. And it's not enough that I'll, I get like woozy and trip or see shit or anything like that. No, it's like you're fully coherent the whole way through. The come up's a little like dizzy for, for, for half an hour, but um, I just take the day to meditate and it's always the same routine. You know, I sit there thinking, I, I go inward into like what I'm feeling in my heart. Like there's always some shit that comes up. Usually there's some crying. You learn something about yourself, the world. And then, yeah, usually I'll like sauna or hot tub or showers. I end it with like water always for an extended period of time. And yeah, you come out of the water, you're clean and you know, you're, you're, you've come down. It's pretty mellow at that point. And you're in this state of like, you can toggle ego. It's easier to be forgiving. It's easier to like, like last weekend I took it. I, I remembered this kid, Eric, who came to my house when I was like, 10 years old or something, nine years old. He came to my house with his dog. Like he really wanted to, you know, he lived really far away. It was like weird for him to be in that part of the neighborhood. He like really wanted to see me and hang out. Like I I knew he needed a friend that day. Like there's some shit he was going through. Uh, Eric was sort of like, yeah, I don't know. Something about the other kids, they were making fun of him, and I, I didn't want to also get bullied, and I, I feel like I wasn't the friend to him that I should have been. Later, when I was a teenager, actually, I, I, did, I did football for one day to win a bet, and Eric taught me how to put on pads in the locker room. Like, he was a really good friend to me, even though I'm not proud of how I treated him. I, we even got into a fight. He was the last guy I ever got into a fight with when I was 14. I ran my fucking mouth to piss him off, I don't even remember why. It's like what I always fucking do. And uh, and I knew we were in a classroom, so he like, couldn't do anything about it. And he jumped on me, and I, yeah, I got into a fight. And Anyway, so yeah, last weekend I remembered all of this with Eric. I felt so fucking terrible, I just cried about it. I was like so guilty, like he really needed a friend. And I wasn't... I should have been that friend. And so I reached out to this guy after like 20 years on, on Facebook and just like apologized to him. I told him everything I just told you guys, basically. I felt so, yeah, but and I felt like this huge relief after, like it was, it was this thing like that I knew that I did was wrong and it was like unsettling me. Like I stuffed it under the rug for fucking 20 years, you know, and it, and that was nice. To, and that's the kind of stuff that comes up, you know, it's, Wrote down a bunch of names. I got a I got a lot of apologizing to do. Yeah, yeah, he responded right away. He was like, yeah, he said like, no, it's all good, man. It's all love. Um, I, you know, I I probably he, he said like, oh, you know, I wasn't the best at that time. Like, it, like he tried like saying he deserved it or something. Like, no, 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 you did nothing to deserve it. There's no good reason for how I treated you. I'm like. You know, thank you for forgiving me. That's that's what I told him. But, no, it was it was nice. Yeah. And then it kind of encouraged me to talk to some other friends I hadn't talked to in a while. I logged into Facebook for the first time in three years to do that. And then uh, my friend from high school that I was hanging out with a lot, um, I got, I saw I had a message from him from like six months ago. So I gave him my number. We caught up a few days ago. That was really nice. I hadn't heard from him in a long time. It was good, it was good. Like, I'm glad I, you know, it, one, one thing led to another thing. It all really, like, lifted my spirit. It was, it was a good weekend. So I don't know, that, that, that's how I would do it. You know, if you're gonna take, like, one day of meditation, I, I usually don't eat that day. You know, I try to fast one day a week. Um, so I don't eat anything. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to not eat on a mushroom day. Um, but yeah, you don't have to, like, overdo it, right? You don't have to do, like, five grams, 10 grams, anything crazy. Good luck getting that much down. It tastes like shit. Um, but yeah, it, it'll always spit you out better than you went in. Is it bad to take it before 20? I don't think it's ever bad to take it. I think there's a lot of horror stories. Um, yeah, it... How can I just... Like, like there's there's one intelligence in the universe. There's there's 
God is animating everyone. You are a piece of him. Like, one actor playing infinite characters. And for that self-induced schizophrenia to make sense, for you to actually believe that you're these characters so that it's immersive, so that you're method acting, you have to make yourself forget that you're God in a sense. And you do that with an ego. Every character, like him. God sees the world perfectly true as it is. And every character that he plays, every ego, is a slight distortion of that. Slightly wrong in a unique way. And what mushrooms do is sort of dissipate that ego, or most psychedelics do it, but I wouldn't recommend drugs to you guys. If, you know, mushrooms are a food and they can dissipate ego, but I don't know. It's, it's like a tool. They're, they're not for everyone, you know. I don't know. Bowie said, uh... Reality is for people that can't handle drugs. Yeah. What do you think of ashwagandha? Uh, I don't know what that is. It's more likely that the universe is a machine for building God. Yeah, it's something like that, incubating. And but then, like, those gods exist in some sort of... Like, I, ultimately, at the highest level, there's only one intelligence. Like, I'm... If, if there's one spiritual thing, like supernatural experience I've had. I feel like God showed me that. I was asking him to. I was asking him how the thing was designed, how it was engineered. That, I was fixated on it. And I asked for two years, and eventually that's what he showed me. And I think it's true because it tracks. It tracks in my gut. It rings true through every version of inference I can, I can use. Like, it... It tracks with Jesus' teachings and the golden rule. It tracks with physics. It tracks with every pre-flood religion and all mysticism and all cultures. Like the, the universal force that permeates everything. In Germany, they call it Vril. In India, it's Prana. In Japan, it's Chi. Or no, Japan, it's Ki. In China, it's Qi, I think. Um, you know. In the U.S., it's been called, like, Oregon. I don't know. It's all the same, different words for the same. Universal force of intelligence. I'm doing good, man. How are you doing, Balgar? What are your thoughts on the afterlife? I don't know, man. I think whatever it is, it's like another page in the book. You know what I mean? And I think we're supposed to focus on this page. I do think this is like a school for that. I will vote for Raynad. I got bad news for you, El Parato. <laughs> Your vote doesn't matter. But I'm flattered, thank you. Also, I don't want to be... A, <laughs> I don't want to be uh, governing. We'll leave that to, to Christ. I'm not a fan of statehood. I want to build shit. I'm more of an engineer. Uh, artist. Why doesn't his vote matter? Because the person that decides who wins an election is the one counting the votes, not the one voting. That's always been true. There hasn't been a... There hasn't been a free election since before Woodrow Wilson in the U.S., even before then, maybe ever. I, mean, I don't know. I 
I, I, I'm not pro-Trump. I'm anti all politicians, all state, all, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think, well, I'm more apathetic towards worldly matters, I guess, the older I get. I'm not anti. I would have to care to be anti. I, I try to be minimally invested in it. I guess that's the way I'd put it. I don't think it serves us. Doesn't that go against your philosophy of not blaming? Well, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just calling it like it is. Saying that the, the counter decides the election goes with my value of saying the truth. I'm not blaming them for it. It is what it is. Ignorance is a sin. You know, like if you think your vote matters, that's... That's on you, brother. It's like the other version of the song. Shit, I thought it was on shuffle. Whatever, it's a good song. Fuck it. What if I just vote because it's fun? Do you, brother. That's the best reason. Do you have any opinion on Kaczynski's power process? I don't know what that is. Kaczynski. Is that the Unabomber? <clears throat> what version of the Bible are you reading? Uh, study Bible right now, I think. Um, that or like the New World Trans... I have, I have the New World Translation physically, and then I have an app that just has every version, so... Yeah. You excited about the Revelations movie by Mel Gibson? No, I, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's been announcing revealing stuff for a long time. I think people that are interested in revealing stuff uh, do it. You know, I I'm more I focus more on people's actions than their words. That's the truth. I haven't watched The Passion of the Christ. No, I've been curious about it though. I like so the actor in The Passion of the Christ, uh, the protagonist. Jesus, if you will. Uh, he did a movie recently that kind of uncovered the unsavory subject of child trafficking globally, right, and pedophilia. And this is like one of these unsavory, disgusting, uncomfortable truths that's increasingly being mainstream talked about, whereas, you know, five years ago it would be dismissed as a conspiracy theory. And people are acknowledging increasingly more and more that this is like a real global problem and a tragedy. And... As more and more of this kind of stuff gets revealed, people are going to get really angry about it. They're going to get really upset. They're going to blame the machinations orchestrating this. They're going to blame their government, other governments, religions. And this is kind of the organic rise from the hearts of men against the beast system. It's this... This is what leads us to World War III. This is what leads us to tribulation. This is the exact same shit that led Germany into World War II in the 30s. And they saw themselves uh, as a victim of globalist machinations. And so, it all tracks with the Bible, you know? I swear to God. I think, I think World War III is like the tribulation. If I had to get, and I could be wrong, I, I don't know. I'm open to being wrong, that's the thing, but there's a ton of prophecies in there that are so like specific and so many of them have come true in order. And if you subscribe to that, then there's just a handful left that haven't happened yet. So we're near the end. I, I, I think, I think, I think we'll see it, which is good. It's a very happy ending. Having it happen in your lifetime seems a bit egoic. 
I think I think it might happen every generation, like a version of it, right? Like it. You could argue World War II is just the last generation's version of the same tribulation, the same cycle repeating itself for the same reasons. You know, different flags, same story this time around, I think. But if this is the last one, which it, if I if I had to bet, I would say it is. Then this is kind of the last cycle for this way of things on Earth. And then where we're going is much better. It'll be good. I think more Star Trek-y. I think more utopian. Everything free. No scarcity. Um, infinite lifespan. You know, pretty neat. Maybe, maybe we're already in that society. And this is like... A VR game that we have to live through <laughs> before we're allowed to enter civilized society, right? Like I said, it, it, get the Minecraft griefing out of our system. Learn the virtues of humility and courage and self-accountability before you're given godlike powers to create and destroy anything you can imagine. I mean, like, the gift of knowledge that we were given is literally more dangerous than nuclear launch codes. They gave something more dangerous than nuclear launch codes to gorillas, to us, because we can build nuclear launch codes. We can build bioweapons that kill, and have built bioweapons that could kill every living thing on the planet, every human, for about two cents per head. Two cents per person to kill everyone is what it costs. What a power, what a destructive and creative power. You know, and with great power comes great responsibility, so here we are learning how to wield it. I use my power to play children's card games. Children's card games are another experience to learn from, you know what I mean? Like I said, that whole accountability lesson, I, I use card games as an example all the time. It's a prime example of that truth holding true in all sorts of situations in life, you know? You blame luck, you lose more. You ask what you could have done better, you stop repeating your mistakes, you get better, you win more. That's Christ's way, self-accountability. That's right, Burns Brightly. I think it's something like that. And then, look, I think, you know, I think some of us ripen to the point where you get harvested and you can sort of graduate from spiritual kindergarten. Uh, and some of us just have to go again, you know? And I, and some, that's what the old soul thing is from. Some, some people are just have been through enough of these loops that, you know, that feeling in your gut, you know where some mistakes are going to lead, you know? And... I mean, genetic memory is a real thing, too. It's supposedly, you keep reincarnating into the same family. You wish you could just reroll? Well, that's the thing, my guy. It's the most satisfying wins are when you get the worst draws sometimes, you know? All you can do is play optimally with what you're given. There's a reason you're given this. Why do you think our next iteration is that of a god? Why not just... Oh, I, I didn't say it's that of a god. I mean, it... Well, the, the fractal thing that I showed earlier, I think we're all... I think god is the only intelligence. So it's... it's. Well, you, you don't want, like, the hubris of believing, like, oh, I am a god equal to other god. No, it's not like that, but there's one god and you're a part of him. So you're kind of already god in that sense. You know, just before you can become a more capable... You know, <laughs> you're, you're a god caterpillar before you can become a god butterfly with all the associated superpowers. You gotta build up the responsibility to wield them, you know? It's like, yeah, I'll use the Pokemon example again. It's like, uh, immortality and Star Trek level tech and infinite abundance. If you have nefarious things in your heart that you're chasing, status, 
greed, you know, women, it, you're just going to make everything worse for everyone else, especially yourself. And you're going to do it at like a Death Star tech level. Like it, it's downright irresponsible. It, the Pokemon example being like, you know, the, the, the gift of knowledge we were given, it's like a level 100 Charizard. And we have like two gym badges. Like, we gotta get some more gym badges before we can use this Charizard, and that's what we're here to do. Love thine enemy. Learn humility. Learn the follies of cowardice and making choices rooted in fear. Just all these basic lessons before we're given the choice to do more damage. When we do it, our soul leaves. Well, I'm not sure how it ends. You know, I, according to the Bible, you know, they're the true believers of Christ, like around this tribulation or what I think will be the Third World War. I, they'll be persecuted. So you sort of get killed for your beliefs. And I think that might be the graduation ceremony. Because that's how I would design it. It's like, uh,. You're forced to play this game, and there's one painful way out that just, it really, you really have to believe it. You know what I mean? You really have to believe there's something on the other side. You really have to die for the right values to graduate. That That's my guess. Baptism by fire is how you get out. Um, but the Bible says there's kind of like two tiers, like there's, there's like two... Basically, after after this tribulation, Jesus comes back, sets up, you know, the millennial kingdom here, utopia on earth, and most of us are going to be here on earth um, enjoying that utopia, uh, but, uh, you know, allegedly 144,000 of us go to heaven uh, to govern more like, you know, statehood or whatever, I don't know. Too much responsibility for me, I think. I just want to make dank video games. Maybe in space. But... Mm. Will you reskin the Bazaar into a biblical game? Nah, I don't know. Now, Bazaar is a fun fantasy sci-fi IP. It'll... It's just a blank canvas to, to make fun characters, fun items, just a big, exciting world to explore. Thoughts on transhumanism? It, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's like the beast system. I think like once you, once you plug a, a processor into your biology, you sort of, you've abdicated your agency and you're sort of gone. You gotta, you gotta respawn at some point. Try again. I think that'll be the choice, like a part of the choice. Like, uh, the comfortable and easy thing to do will be the wrong thing to do, as usual. We gotta choose the hard right over the easy wrong. That's my issue with the accountability thing with victimhood. It's, it's easier than self-accountability. Victimhood is easier. It's the easy wrong over the hard right. Reincarnation is not a reasonable belief. Uh, you saying that it's not a reasonable belief is not a reasonable belief. Because you could say that I don't know. But to have conviction that that is wrong is just as irrational as to have conviction that it's right. It's You're making the same amount of assumptions. I defer to people that have studied it a hell of a lot more than I have. And reincarnation is one of those pretty universal themes. Uh, you know, not just in Christianity, but most... Uh, religions historically, going back millennia. Mm.
to refrain will basically be to become Amish. Dude, I'm trying to become Amish. I would love to control my own water supply, my own food supply. If I could afford it, it's the first thing I would do. Buy some land. Try to poison myself a little slower than the state-fed food that we're all going to be subject to in the near future. But yeah, like when shit hits the fan, supply lines are the first thing to go. But I, I don't know, I'm not like prepper mentality or anything like that. I just, I've always loved gardening. In Ukraine, we had a, a little like acre. We grew watermelons, berries, everything. It was like the happiest time of my life. Everything was edible, every bush. It'd be nice to have that again. I just like animals too. It'd be nice to raise some cows. I like giant puppies. Thank you for the stream. I hope you saved the VOD because I want to watch what I missed. And honestly, I needed this brother. Thank you and good night. Hey, thank you, thanks here. It's a uh, words reach. They're meant to... Those who have ears to hear kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, there's a, you're meant to watch today. Thank you for listening now. I'm glad some of it helped. Why do you think civilization will fail? It's run by fallible people with bad intentions. For now. The Alchemist by Paulo. You're not the first one to recommend that to me. Uh, a friend of mine uh, recommended that to me a few days ago, actually. Hmm. What religion do you subscribe to at the moment? I'm Christian, I guess. It's the best way to describe it. But I don't know, that, that word is so tainted by like the organizations that have called themselves that while doing anti-Christian things. I'm a Jesus enthusiast. But it's not to, that's not to say I don't believe in any of the other ones. I, I think it's big parts of that message are complementary to other things I've read and other cultures and Where do you learn what is right then without the bullshit? Well, that's a good question. How do you know anything is true? It's actually very hard to answer, you know? It's, you could say like two plus X equals five. And then I say, oh, X, X equals three. And you're like, well, how do you know? Have you seen three? What's your source for three? You have to infer. There's always some amount of inference you have to do. Plato wrote, wrote a whole book on how do you know anything is true. It's a very interesting question. You know it when you fucking hear it. <laughs> In here. And your life experience validates it, you know? Okay, I'll keep using that card game example, right? You lose at a card game. If you blame luck, you'll lose more. If you ask yourself what you could have done better, you'll improve. You know that's true. I know that's true. Our experience has validated that. But, you know, there's always going to be someone that argues with it. It's... I, so so what, what I land on is I, it has to make sense from all angles. Because the truth, the truth is true from all angles. So if I can find one angle where there's some conflict or like it doesn't, it conflicts with... I look for inconsistencies or hypocrisy or... Yeah, and if I find one example of it, I know it's bullshit. Because the truth is true from all angles. The other thing I ask is, is how many assumptions am I making on whatever perspective I'm adopting? And the, the, the truth makes fewest assumptions, basically. Like, I, if, if I'm torn between two viewpoints, I'll go with the one where I'm making fewer assumptions. Or assumptions of lower gravity. Smaller leaps of logic. That's another good way to infer. Have you read Hume or anything about the possibility of induction? Nope. No, I'm not sure what that is. It sounds kind of familiar, but I don't know. <laughs> what makes your monotheistic religion 
any more right than any of the others around the world? That's a great question. So I, I didn't I didn't start on this one, right? I started on a bunch of other religions, past and present. And I asked myself this too. It, it, the other ones were either self-contradictory, like I said, there's something I could find about them that's self-contradictory, or something about it I knew to be like false, like Gnosticism, which I got swept up in for, for a couple months there before really understanding what it is. I, I know it's wrong because I know that the card player that blames luck is wrong. And it's a, it's a belief system of victimhood. The, the other thing you can do is uh, character assessment. Look at the people that don't just label themselves as a religion, but the people that actually live and act the things that they say they believe. And look at the character of those people, because their character is a reflection of their belief system. Everything they do is a reflection of their belief system. Pay attention to the men you surround yourself with. And, uh... The people that I've seen that act, that do what the Bible says to do, don't just pay lip service to it, don't just call themselves Christian, but people that act Christian, uh, I, I've had, I, I spent a good amount of time with them and I think their character uh, is beyond reproach to date. So I, I think that reflects well on their belief system, their character. It's kind of like a you'll know them by their fruits thing, you know, like, uh, yeah, so. And then, you know, I, I know plenty of other belief systems, plenty of other religions where I look at the men that act out those beliefs and I see the character of those men. And I don't want to put myself in the middle of that, you know. I don't want to be the player that blames luck, so I have a great deal of conviction that I'm not Gnostic. Lots of terrible things in the Bible. Says somebody that's never read it. Hoopla, how do you have such a great deal of conviction in something being wrong when you don't understand it and haven't read it? Brother, I believe in it and I haven't even finished reading the Bible. It's so fucking dry, to start especially. You're gonna sit here and tell me no, no, no. I've researched this subject in great depth, and I know that it's wrong. No! You're another rank 20 dipshit telling me that my Hearthstone play is wrong when you don't know how to play Hearthstone. <laughs> this is the reality, you know? And I, and I have a long way to go in Christianity. Here I am still calling people a dipshit. There's a politer way to say that. I say that with love. How do you reconcile the idea of an omniscient God with free will? So I, so the omniscient God is the only intelligence in the universe, as I see it. That's my belief system. And so he has, he is you. You are him. Like he, you have to, you are the only player in this game. And after your life, you play my life and your mom's life and your enemy's life and your dog's life. And there's no other animate thing. Just you are the only intelligence, right? And so if that is the omniscient God. So where was your question? Where's the second half of it? It was, uh, you believe in an omniscient God. Where'd his message go? I just saw it. Uh, fuck. Whatever, do you have to retype it for me to answer it? I don't know. I'm sorry. How do you reconcile the idea of an omniscient God with something that I... Oh, with with free will, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So 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 imagine you're this you're you're everyone, right? You're you're optimizing for your own experience. You're the only player in this game. Do you want to restrict your optionality, or do you just want to have free will to do what you want? Free will is what I would choose. You want like and and, and when I'm trying to make a game, I'm always trying to give the player more choice, more control. You know. And uh, that includes the option to make mistakes.
for a bunch of reasons, you know, because you have to play the bad guys too. You're not just the hero, you're the heel. You're not just Christ, you're Satan. You're, you're... <laughs> you want to have, when you're the good guy, you want to, you want to have the fun of fixing the problem that the, the bad act created. When you're the bad guy, you want to have the fun of breaking the rule. It's, uh... I think it's very compatible, the one omniscient god of free will. Why would you design... How would, why would you design it any other way if you're the only player? Free will is a spectrum IMO? I don't know what that means. But yeah, there is there is agency, like you have the freedom to make mistakes. Where does Satan fit into that though? Just, uh, just another part of God like you. Different role to play. What does the Bible say about weed? Nothing. I've seen I've seen like old uh, carvings of Jesus with mushrooms in the background, old paintings, like lots of them. Uh, Satan isn't evil; he's just misunderstood. I I think about that a lot. Like that. First of all, that word has people mean a lot of different things when they say Satan. It's di it's different from Lucifer. The way I mean it. I think Satan is like the conservative force of the universe. The thing that makes everything follow the path of least action. Like when I'm doing design and I'm cutting stuff out, I'm using my cynicism as a chisel to make the thing better, that feels satanic in a sense. A minimalist. Counter entropy. And then there's an expansive force that's the opposite of that. Entropy. Adding shit. Expanding. And Satan's like Because you need both. You need you need both for anything to have form. If it's only expansion, everything's formless. It's like a plasma cloud. And if if it's only contraction, it's just a singularity. And so so to have like volume and shapes, you you need the two opposing forces to meet. I think it's something like that. But it's, it's really hard to like talk about game design with like those kinds of axes of design. You know, like I, if you're God, you're 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 the time scale that you're seeing shit on is just hard to relate to. Like the the way that a tree sees its life is on such a different time scale than we see it, and an ant sees their life. Like we're viewing. Time is relative, is what I'm saying. And God is like maximum macro time perspective. So it's hard to like envision. But then, then when he is designing stuff, I think he's like, his tools are like, okay, I'll add time, I'll add causality, I'll add, like, like it's hard to imagine experiences with any one of those things missing. But I try, I'm curious. It's gotta be fun to make stuff. I don't know, making stuff is like my favorite thing to do gotta be God's favorite thing to do. All he does is make stuff. Pure order and pure noise chaos both have no informational value. Exactly, exactly. Like, you're, he's trying to create context for the play <laughs> that he's, you know, living, yeah. I'm not saying it's not hyper. Dude, you're the one making a bunch of arguments, Hoopla. But you're, you're, you're actually, you're not making arguments. You're just talking shit. I'm banning you. If you said, like, hey, you know, Raynad, here's two passages that contradict each other. What do you think? We could have had a conversation. But instead, you're like, wrong, wrong, wrong. And, all right, man. And you're being a dick about it. Come on. Separating the wheat from the chaff, boys. Atheist keyboard warriors, yeah. I get it. They're miserable 
and they feel like they got a, they drew a bad hand and they're a victim of their circumstances and <laughs> you know Robert Edward Grant on YouTube really great videos uh, no I don't yeah I, I, I worry about like any video that hasn't been delisted. <laughs> you know, like, if, if you can still watch it, the powers that be want you to see it kind of thing. So this is... But if you think Robert Supper's one of the good guys, you guys are... You've know, fallen into what I fell into. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to unsee it once you see it. You still listen to the Beastie Boys a lot? To be honest, I don't listen to music that much. I just sort of put it on because I'm streaming. Not a habit. But, uh, I don't know, I'm glad I did. How much do you think the Bible leaves open for interpretation? Do you think it's dangerous to take it more literally? Um... I think it depends which manuscript. Because the Bible isn't like one monolithic book. It's a collection of 66 manuscripts. And they were written very far apart from one another. Like, you know hundreds of years apart from one another. And so some of them have more symbolism, like Revelation, the last one is like all symbolism. But uh, like, you, like you couldn't interpret it literally if you tried. Um, whereas like some of them are more a historical account of like this demographic moved here, this guy did this thing, he had these kids with this name. And that stuff is all true. So I, I think, yeah, par parts you're meant to take literally parts you're meant to take symbolically, but kind of the beauty of how it's written is the same themes that go throughout. Uh, so, over and over and over again. He doesn't know about all the books that got caught in the editing room. So see, I read bullshit like that on Twitter. Uh, a bunch of people were saying like, because everyone wants to, everyone has this egoic desire to be like, I know something you don't know. Oh, I'm, because everyone wants to posture like they're informed, right? And so I saw a bunch of posts from these propaganda accounts talking about like, oh, look at all these books they cut from the Bible. But the thing is, you don't fucking know. You weren't there. I don't know, right? And, and so let's, let's just, let, let, let me flip it this way. Let, let me say, let's say I'm a Gnostic Luciferian and I'm trying to, to steer everyone in the wrong direction. And I want to put my bullshit on the same level as the 66 manuscripts that Jesus approved of. Wouldn't I make tweets like this? Like, wouldn't I say, well, the Book of Enoch is, is biblical. Look, they cut the Book of Enoch. You know? Book of Gospel of Thomas, right? And then they start slipping. And you look at these texts that they're claiming are cut from the Bible. And all of them are Gnostic. All of them. It's ridiculous. It is very clear the direction is trying to steer steer things. I don't know. To me, it, it... Smarter men than us uh, landed on those books for a reason. Best thing is read and figure out why they weren't included. No, you're going in with the presupposition that they should have been included to begin with. The onus is on you to de describe why they, like for them to have been cut or not included would mean that they were in contention to begin with. That's on you to prove, brother. You can't frame it that way. It's, it's a disingenuous way to frame the argument. Law books that Jesus approved of, you mean that the Romans approved of. So the Romans murdered Jesus. Uh, Jesus always preached from the book, always from the manuscripts. He always, every time he did like a sermon, he was from the, the, the text. He didn't ad-lib, you know what I mean? Like he did, he like taught, but he, he would reference scripture while preaching always, so. In practice, he was good with these 66. The Bible did not exist when Jesus walked the earth. A lot of it did. 
a lot of the manuscripts did, because the Bible is 66 manuscripts, many of which were written before Jesus was born. And those manuscripts that were written before he was born, hundreds of years before he was born, prophesized his birth, the family he would come from, the day of his birth, and the day of his death, hundreds of years before he lived. And all of them were proven true to the day. Just like the fall of Jerusalem soon after him, just like the like the demographic shifts it talks about. It's, it's pretty remarkable. And you have to make a lot of assumptions that are conspiratorial to, you know. Yeah, but like, like I wasn't there, right? That's not, that's not a good enough, to me that wouldn't, if I'm, if I'm not a believer, that wouldn't be a good enough argument for me to be like, okay, now I believe that the Bible's real. Like for me, like look at the character of the men that, that live those values. Read it, first of all. But you have to like look into something before knowing it's like, before claiming that it's not true. If you don't even know what it is, you can't have conviction that it's not true. It's just as irrational as having conviction that it is true before reading it, you know? And also, like I said, uh, I don't know that whether it's true or false matters. I think you're fixated on arguably an irrelevant thing or like I don't know if it matters that it's chronologically true or like a, like even if it were fiction the lessons would still be true you know what I mean that kind of thing but I, I, I think I think it is more literal than that too I think it sort of rings true from every angle You know about the Gospel of Mary? Nope. Well, yeah, it's the thing, like, you, you have to really... None of us have an eschatology degree, right? Like, we, I'm not an expert in this shit, but... It, it's... It's really easy to, to just, like, claim that something was biblical and then was cut when it was never in contention to begin with. Like, a bunch of these Gnostic circles will talk about the Book of Enoch, and then it has like three sequels written by cults. Nobody talks about Book of Enoch 2, Electric Boogaloo, Book of Enoch 3, you know, like, come on, dude. And it, and then, and then, you know, you read these things and like, they're, it, they're wise sounding, not wise, you know? Like I, I let me, I'll give an example. Like I spent a lot of time, uh, I spent a lot of time in the venture capital world, right? I've been running a startup for 10 years and the thing about venture capital that I really don't like is like the character of the men I found myself surrounded by. Everything about that industry rewards intellectual posturing more than it does intellect. And you notice these patterns in how people say smart sounding things that actually have no substance. And it, 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 it's a pathology rampant in VC. Because to the undiscerning, like it, they sound the same, you know? and. And so when I really take a critical eye to some of these other texts, it's, I don't know, it's, Gospel of Thomas is kind of, you know, it doesn't ring true, right, with timeless wisdom the way that the Bible does. It's, it doesn't really have much of a message at all, frankly. How do you know you aren't doing the same? Dude, I don't, right? It's, I, I infer, like I said, how do you know anything? Don't try to hand wave away arguments like that. How do you know? Like, nobody has a good answer to how do you know? Nobody. You can only infer. Every day I ask though, I like to challenge it, you know? I'm open to being wrong about it. I'm open, I'm open to the Bible being wrong. Three months ago, I was wrong in my religious view. Dead wrong. Three months from now, I might also, I might realize now I'm dead wrong, you know? I don't think so, so far. It's my best bet so far, but yeah, it's an interesting subject. But yeah, I'm, I'm always open to the idea of being proven wrong. Because like I said, the, the truth has to be true from all sides, right? So if there's one indisputable falsehood, 
you know, it, 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 it uh, that to me would make me reassess the whole thing, kind of. No, I'm not Jewish. Do you think atoms are symbolic for life? Consciousness is like a neutron attached to a proton. Love, but the universe needs balance, which is the... Mm, no, I, I don't think it... I don't, I don't see the atom that way. I, I think the atom is like... the same structure as a galaxy. As above, so below. Yeah, like a like a fractal. Yeah, I'm gonna run to the bathroom quick. See you guys in a minute. What's up, guys? How are you doing? 
Sorry about that. I don't know why I'm apologizing. Nature called. Is anyone watching my shenanigans? 1,200 people? My goodness. What a huge church this would be. <laughs> right now we talk while you're gone, and I think that you should slow down in the shrooms, bro. I love chat. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to ban a bunch of those comments, actually. Not because of anything, because of shrooms. I just, uh, there's, I, I, I do, um, it's like a pet peeve of mine. Like, uh, when people try to police my language, it's like a really common thing on Twitch. People don't like the subject or what I said, so they're like, you're not allowed to say it. Or, you know, they try to police what I do. Brother, you go live. You talk about whatever you want to on your platform, you know. This is the Rain Ed Show. By fire be purged indeed. Okay. Do you wash your legs? How do you avoid washing your legs in a shower? It would take a great deal of effort. I do shower if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I got I got a beer. I don't know. I had a I I drink beer like once a month, <laughs> you know. Um I have like two. But whatever, I'll have a I'll have a second one today. Why not? Streaming is not something anyone should have to suffer through sober. Yo, me, I was in the Australian Overwatch team. Thanks for the opportunity. It was good times. Hey, dude, th thanks for playing for us, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of how I was running the company at that time. It was uh, great to have you guys. I really like the Australian team. There's a, uh, you guys are fun to hang out with. It was uh, hey, Katie, and. Uh, it was the nutty Pharaoh player Pharaoh player from was good in TF2 as well. I'm so bad at user names this so long ago. My bad. Man. Yeah, Yuki. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good team. The stream rocks way better than Titty Streamers, Lod Zoomers. Well, I'm happy to help, man. So, uh, glad you're hanging out. I you're having fun. Where can I read the stuff you were talking about in more detail? In the Bible. The Bible. But I started with uh, a lot of shenanigans before the Bible. All the esoteric mystery school shit, right? Because you want to feel special. You want to have this information asymmetry. You want to be in the club that other people aren't in. You want to know things that other people don't know. Get an edge. It's all appeal to ego. It's all weakness. All the occult shit. Every secret club with an oath. Small men, weak social climbers following other small men. Q is a part of that shit, too. All, all of it's leading to Gnosticism. All of it. You're very spiritual now. I'm just trying to grow up, man. And yeah, when, when, you, when you start asking yourself why, why you do any verb, and you're dead honest with yourself about that, really, you start realizing how bad your reasons for doing almost anything are. And then, uh, and then you look for a good reason. And that, that will inevitably lead you to some spiritual belief system. Or at least you'll start exploring them instead of like dismissing them outright, which is what I was doing for 20-something years of my life, right? It's like, I, you know, I, I don't think... I think it's, it's, a, it's a hard pill to swallow going from like, you know, not believing in anything spiritual and not really being a part of your life at all straight into like, oh, I'm a devout Christian. It's... I don't know, I... I I, I did a lot of intermediate steps of like exploring other religions and mythologies and I don't know. There's, there's so many charlatans out there. So many people leading, leading you astray. And there's one clear organized trajectory for the new age and conspiratorial stuff, which is funneling everything towards Gnosticism, which is the Luciferian worldview. 
Yeah, I, di I didn't waste my time, right? All that stuff brought me to the Bible. Because even when you're reading bullshit, there's truth in it. You know what I mean? Like I said, a, a clock that's six hours ahead is equally reliable. And, uh... You know, <laughs> CNN is a great source of truth if you just believe the opposite of what they're telling you. Or try to pay attention to what they're not mentioning. It's... It's the, the, the Kramer trading method, you know what I mean? But on a spiritual level. So you can learn something from anyone, from anything. Is the moon landing faked? You know, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know why people are so invested in it. Like, it happened 50 years ago. I don't care. I. More interesting question is, like, is space real? Now, everyone, every, every, there's a bunch of people in here that have challenged. We're like, Raynad, how do you know this Bible stuff's true? How can you prove it? How do you know? I could pose the same question to you about space. Not fucking one of you thinks space is fake. All of you have a great deal of conviction that it's true. But why? You're just taking the word of a priest at the end of the day. And you've never been there and you've never seen it and you can't really know. And so you're, by the way, I think space is real. I, I, you know, but, but I'm saying like, uh, your conviction is irrational by your own logic, by your own burden of proof standards. And so, yeah, the, the whole, how do you know anything is a weak way to try to dismiss an idea to intellectually posture instead of doing the harder thing, which is like wrestling with these thoughts, chewing on them, not accepting them, but like engaging with them in a productive way. Instead, people seek to avoid the discussion. You know, they seek to dismiss. I think that's, that's, that's a weakness. You want to tackle it head on. Hope things are good after this life. I miss Reckful. They'll be a lot better, man. They'll be a lot better. We've been to space? No, you haven't, brother. You heard a guy on TV tell you that they've been to space. You don't know anyone that's been to space. I don't know anyone that's been to space. I haven't been to space. But you have conviction in it. You know what I mean? Unlike the Bible. And it's uh, your same reasons for dismissing the Bible. <laughs> you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have the same burden of proof for your beliefs, is what I'm saying. I'm trying to point out the hypocrisy. The, but it's a very deep question. How do you know anything is true? It's 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 hard to answer that sometimes. You have to infer. Have you heard any of C.S. Lewis's writings on Christianity? I haven't. I'm I'm trying to like read Christianity before I read people's opinions of Christianity. You know what I mean? Everyone has an agenda uh, against it usually in some way, trying to steer people towards other stuff, and. Uh, I just want to read the Bible before I read other people's opinion about the Bible. You know what I mean? I, I, the, the whole notion of middlemen is the whole fucking problem. The game of telephone, you know, the message just gets garbled. What is my satellite dish connecting to? My beard, my friend, my cosmic antennae. Actually, that's a call back to like an hour ago. You guys probably won't hear. Would you learn Hebrew to get closer to God? Yeah, I'm super curious about Hebrew because of... Uh... So it it's super interesting. Like the, the, the Hebrew alphabet, it's like identical to Phoenician, I think. And... Uh... You go back to these, like, pre-flood... Like, there was some sort of global language, and old old Hebrew seems to be, like, the closest to that. And there's something about it mathematically where, like, the... Every letter is a number. You can make, like, A1, B2 kind of thing, and then it, uh... You add the numbers up to make the words, and it... It, it has these, like, numerical patterns within it that are pretty interesting. And then, you know, you know what I, 
So somebody mentioned like Pythagorean schools and all the mystery school shit earlier, right? Like I, so I, I, I bought some of these books, right? Pythagoras is color theorem of color and all those. Whatever. I, I was looking into all these esoteric books for a while, and there was this one book I came across that was so interesting. It, it had this hypothesis that old Hebrew was actually a sign language to begin with. It was all the letters um, you could draw with your hand, apparently, like every letter. It was pretty unique among languages. So uh, the thinking was it was like a nonverbal language to start, potentially. And I thought that was really interesting. And yeah, the, the, the more you look into this mysticism stuff and, and, and Jesus himself, and like, like, they're, they're, like there are people that could control magnetism or whatever with their body. I mean, today there's people, the healers that do this, that are alive, you, reliable, you, you tested. And uh, when, when I think about hands doing stuff, like going like spell casting, you know what I mean? I'm like, shit, is that? Maybe, maybe I just maybe I just want it's wishful thinking for World of Warcraft reality. I don't know. It's very interesting. Something about that language is super uh, unique. Um, I'd love to learn it. I'm just uh, so lazy, but I think I. I I gotta get through the Bible. You know how hard it is for me to read a book? Like, I, I'm a 32-year-old man that's grown up in America. I play video games for a living. I am addicted to media and screens. And I'll, I'll be the first to say it. Books are a shit medium. YouTube beat them. Better user experience. <clears throat> but YouTube at this point is just somebody curating the videos I'm allowed to see. And, uh, chat doesn't know about Reiki, yeah. There's, there's a lot of it. There's Qigong, there's, uh, you can look at a bunch of accounts, uh, with Tibetan monks, uh, the levitation shit, uh, some, some versions of this, like, and like I said, when, you know, after World War Three, if this Lucifer stuff plays out as it is written, He's going to try to engender worship for himself right after that war and wants to be seen as the hero building a utopia coming out of that. And he's going to do some of these magic tricks along the way to, you know, pretend he's Christ kind of thing. YouTube isn't the same since live streaming became mainstream. You think so? What changed? I mean, I've noticed it's gotten like more and more uh, censored. So is everything, you know, so. I'm going to have to pay to join your religion. Dude, I, I don't even know what my religion is. I'm trying to figure it out. It's part of this exercise. I'm going to talk about this stuff. I'm just talking about what's on my mind. Lately, lately it's God, so. Is the Bible against homosexuality? I don't know. I haven't read through the whole thing, but I, I haven't come across anything like that yet. I'm, I'm still at the parts that are like, this guy gave birth to this guy, and then they lived this many. <laughs> it's like, uh, working on it, you know. That later sucks. Conversations between religions on YouTube is interesting. I'll check that out. Yeah, it'll be interesting. All right, boys. Well, I don't know. It's 11:30. It's been a good stream. I've actually been live for four hours. Wow, this is way longer than I expected. Well, either way, I'm grateful for you all hanging out with me today, listening to to this stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I'll up to. I, I think I'm gonna upload a video about accountability, and I'll rehash. Some of these points that I kept harping on, because I think they're important, whether someone's religious or not. There's, there's some stuff that just needs to be said too that I'll that I'll say. But um, yeah, I'm glad you guys liked it. It's a pleasant surprise. Thank you for joining me. Leave the bot up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm too lazy to do any. I hit stop streaming and then I walk away and. Whatever Twitch does with that is up to them. Yeah, I don't know if they delete the bot or what, but... 
there's some guy that's been like re-uploading my videos, um, which, like normally I wouldn't care if they were unedited, but um, he keeps like selectively editing them, and that that really bothers me. Like uh, if you're gonna plagiarize my shit, uh, don't edit it. You're, you're not the judge of like what words of mine are worth hearing. Um, if you keep editing it, I'll just strike them all of them. Like, yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, I don't give a shit if it's unedited. Um, why do people care so much about being clean cut? Because they're small men, and they try to have this parasocial manipulative relationship with the people they watch. They go to Chatterbait, and they try to get a girl to do disgusting things with, with a cucumber for $5. They come here and they try to dictate what subjects I talk about, how much I shave. It's... They don't have their own life in order, so they try to control others. Anyway, you guys uh, have, have, a great, have a great night. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll see you next week or... I don't know, whenever I... You'll, you'll be seeing more of me soon. We'll, uh, we'll start promoting the bazaar when it's when it's ready to be promoted here in the near future. So, till then, boys. You have a good night.